Good evening. And welcome to Science and Sorcery, a show where science communicators play Dungeons and Dragons to raise money for charity. And your host is running on I'm not sure how much sleep on a day where the clocks changed and I took an international flight to a different time zone. So this is going to be a fun uh, session. Um, we are not live tonight. Uh, so if you're saying hello in the chat, hello. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a chat. We'll find out. Um, but don't expect us to respond to anything you say. Uh, tonight we are starting session three of our campaign, Witness to Ruin. As always, I'm joined by my players, Sam Langford, Alex Holt, Rachel Williams, and saving him for last in case his Wi-Fi drops out again, a little further away. I'm still here! He's still here, <laughs> yes! Um, we... This is still going to air in March, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I am, guys. Um, the, we are still going to be raising money for Gallup, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, we've already hit our goal, um, thanks to the incredible efforts of Sam and Alex and Alex's players during our uh, charity one-shot, the transaction. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it after this. Um, if you donate £10 or 12 US dollars or more, Send a screenshot proving that you did so to the Science and Sorcery Twitter account, and you will be entered into a giveaway to win a custom dice bag. Sam's got it right there uh, from the Cozy Gnome Company, um, who we are supporting and who is supporting us, sort of. Yeah, yeah. It's a beneficial relationship. Collaboration. Mutual, <laughs> mutually beneficial relationship. A symbiosis. Um, symbiosis. That's, mm. that's a nice scientific word. Other than that, um, we will be live again next week, Wednesday. Do not fret. Um, but for now, that is all the announcements we have. Perfect. Um, so let's just get into the story. Yay. Last we left off, um, our four intrepid teenagers had arrived in the small town of Bearfell made their way to the Royal Unicorn, the local inn, um, encountered a handsome but not very intelligent uh, bartender who was unaware of the advances some of the party members may have made on him um, until they discovered he was actually in his mid-40s. They spoke with a very old farmer who insisted that all of his sheep were going missing because of a mysterious creature called a mornling. The teenagers decided to go and sleep in the sheep field to try to catch the mornling in the act, uh, bringing with them a barrel of apple cider. Um, after having some nice drunken shenanigans, they were unable to catch anything suspicious happening overnight. In the morning, they set off on the trail of this mysterious creature and picked it up on the edge of the field, eventually foregoing tracks leading towards the river, instead choosing to follow what they thought were bear tracks into a little woodland a little while off. And there found the corpse of said bear. The corpses of Tuda, the wizard who had set off before them, and the hunter who had guided Tuda. And a very, very angry, strange, pure white moose. And some little creatures in grey leaves living in a tree trunk. After killing the moose, being accused of murder by the little grey creatures, killing one of the little grey creatures, chasing the other one back into the tree trunk, we pick up here in the clearing. Several magic missiles have just imploded against the trees as M let their spell go, frustrated that the birds seem to have vanished for the moment, um, and M can't get in some target practice this way. Mikaelin, Nimbo, you've... You're still hearing the soft muttering in a language you don't understand anymore. It's no longer elfish, it's something else entirely. From this creature in the tree trunk. Uh, it's vanished back inside. And... Apart from this, the clearing is now quiet. I, 
I can't see in the dark. Do you want do you want to stick your head down there and see if there's anything anything there? Yeah, I'll take a look. Can I take a look? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a relatively narrow. It's like just a hole in a in a tree, um, mm. like cartoonish. So it's you can kind of get your head in. It's a little bit difficult. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Are you sticking? Are you gonna like try to stick your head in as far as you can? Uh, to try to um, let me check my intelligence real quick. <laughs> I like to imagine that that sneeze was from like you know some of the kind of like detritus in the bottom of the, yes. the tree hole. <laughs> Um, I, uh, what, what check would I, because I, I know I personally do not want to stick my head in the tree, <laughs> but there's a chance that if I'm role playing, that I stick my head in the tree. Just a so, straight, in, a straight intelligence roll. Straight intelligence roll, let's hit it. 16. 16. I'm not gonna stick my You're head not gonna, okay. <laughs> Are you just like gonna, just gonna peer in? Yeah, 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 just peer in. All right. Do I need um, to make yeah. a perception check now? <laughs> uh, yes, please. Please do. Okie dokie. Da, 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 da. Perception, perception. Pew! Can I help? Uh, no. I got six. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. A six for perception. No, you you cannot help on this because there there's enough space for Michaelin to try to peer in, but you can't see in the dark anyways. So the, this isn't really a task you can assist with. Oh, can, um, I, can I have advantage because I've got dark vision? Yeah, actually, yes, go for it. Yeah. Yes, can I guide? Dark vision. Yeah. Okay, now I've got 11. And Dougmar, can I guide? <laughs> I will let you do this in, in, in retrospect, yes. I will <laughs> let you add a guidance to it, yes. Does that mean I get to roll again? No, you get to add a d4. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. In d d d4, roll. I got a four, so four. I got fifteen in total. Fifteen. All right. You're peering in, and you clearly you can't see like everything on like the side closest to you because of the angle, um, mm -hmm. but you can see this creature huddled in on itself, still muttering, shaking softly, clutching its dagger. Um, you can see this is a, it's a very small space, um, like just about big enough for two of these creatures uh, to sort of like move around a little bit and with your dark vision you're able to make out um these carvings um and you take a moment and they look like very crude carvings of this moose um mm. and gotcha. carvings of two little creatures next to the moose and they're just all over the inside of the of the tree trunk that you can see. Um, there's like leaf litter on the ground that's it's kind of it looks a bit like a nest. So it's got like a lot of leaf litter mostly, but it's got tufts of like fur, bits of wool as well, uh, just tucked inside to to line it to create enough insulation for these creatures to live here. Um, there's in one corner right behind the creature, you can kind of see what looks like an assortment of like seed pods and like kind of shriveled up berries and stuff probably their larder um but other than that there doesn't seem to be very much in here okay i relate all of that to nimbo the, you said there's some wool in there does it does it look fresh is there any blood on it because i i don't know if these have anything to do with the field stuff i'm really confused yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, does that that big kind of deer wouldn't have wool, would it? Would just kind of have a pelt. So, well, I think wool. I think sheep. Um, so Mark, seems... make another intelligence check for me. Uh oh, just a straight, not a safe, just a straight intelligence roll. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh well, you they'll have the same modifier for you. For oh, it's a nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, yeah. Um, the wool. The wool inside, um, there does appear to be it's it's like kind of curled up and like tucked in, so it's hard to tell if there's blood on it. Uh, but it definitely looks like the wool from those sheep in the clearing, uh, or in the in the like field that you spend the night in. All of the fur, there is no white fur in it. It's all brown. Oh, I also relate that to Nimbo. What color's the bear? Black. Mm. 
And what colour were the sheep in the field? The sheep in the field? <laughs> uh, they were white. White and fluffy. Hmm. I, uh... I feel kind of bad about how this turned out. This, uh, mm -hmm. this little person seems, seems pretty stressed out, but how, how can we communicate? Was there anyone who just didn't do like that much murdering? Cause I think I'm kind of out the picture, but maybe we'll talk to one of you. Um, DM question. Yes. Limbo says, looking at the sky. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. There was one language that it was Elfish. speaking Elvish. Yeah. Okay. And, it was and now speaking it's, Elfish. And, and now, now it's, it's muttering in a different language. Yeah, now it's switched to a language neither of you understand. Okay. Um, the moose <laughs> also seemed, when you spoke to it, its response wasn't normal animal noises. It sounded more like language as well. But you're um, not sure. But I didn't understand. You didn't understand it, no. Yeah. Um, um, okay. No, no. Nimbo and Blurta, you both understood the creatures when they were calling you, <laughs> telling you, like, how dare you first, and then switching to murderer um, after that. Uh, Nimbo and Muck, you're at Trunk. M and Blurta, what are you What are you two up to? Um, so has, has this all been relayed to everyone now? I would assume so. Okay. Um, so I would... So we're, I would say at this minute we probably feel like we're not under immediate threat of attack no. from what we gather. Okay. Um, the bird song is like slowly starting to come back. Um, and you can see now there are some birds that are starting to like, mostly wood pigeons, uh, starting to sort of make an appearance trying to see what happened here, what all this, this noise was. I think I want to go over and investigate the moose corpse. Okay, uh, you can do that. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Uh, twelve. Well, um, it's a large uh, bull moose. Um, it's. Do you think Blurt has seen a moose before? I think she's seen pictures of mooses before. Okay. <laughs> so you're not entirely sure how large this one is in like relation to other moose, but it's. I really want to say meese, guys. I really want to say meese. I'm going to try not to. <laughs> no, um, just roll with it. The plural of moose should be moosooch. Um, which is even better than meese. Um, no, Blurta, you're not entirely sure like if this is a normal sized moose or not. Uh, you could maybe ask Nimmo or someone else. Um, it is entirely devoid of pigment. Um, its eyes, looking in them, there is, it's pure black and white. Uh, even inside, like, their mouth, even their blood was black. In Inside of their mouth, everything is white. It is like something stripped all of the color from this creature. Um, it died uh, from a massive blow to the neck, uh, but you watched Muck do that, so that's not surprising. I think I know um, what caused that one, yes. Yeah, its antlers are um, very large. Like, bigger than the pic- like, proportionally bigger than in the pictures I've seen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Okay, the, the, like, so when you say it's, like, entirely monochrome, mm -hmm. is that even extending to like colored light that is shining on it is it like like you shine like you see sunlight on a white sheet of paper like you can tell there is a slight off whiteness or is it like literally no. absorbing all the color it is literally absorbing all of the color have i ever heard of any magic like that uh you can make an arcana check uh that is a nice 17 17 um, magic specifically doing something like this, no. You are familiar with the concept of the shadow fell. The place that the dead go. Hmm. Uh, another plane, one of the few which wasn't entirely sealed from this one because the dead would still leave to go there, but it was very difficult for things to come back. Um, this plane is entirely monochrome as well. Um, and this moose sounds like a creature that maybe belonged there 
uh, at least given its appearance. Okay, so I just think I'll just turn to those as like, I do have um, a hypothesis perhaps. This creature has no color in it at all, and that would be consistent with a creature that had come from the Shadow Fell. Um, what some kind of horrible undead moose is doing here, I would not know right now, but we shall find out. Well, if they're from the Shadow Fell, did we just send them back? No, I'm pretty sure it's still here. It's <laughs> <laughs> Nimbo, you being religious would know its spirits would have departed back to the Shadow Fell. If not its physical <clears throat> being. Well, and... you know, uh, this this little this little person in there seems pretty upset with things as the way they are. Maybe we could offer to send them back too. Sounds violent, but you know, <laughs> we could ask. I thought you, you might have something. So I will walk up to um, the entrance to the burrow and just be mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna, in I'm Elvish. Gonna... Tap her on the, the tap, tap her on the back and give her guidance. Okay, thank you. That's default. Um, small grey person. Like you think we may have done a cruelty, but in fact we have helped this moose return to the land of its home. May it was not an unkindness we did, and I will roll a deception check. <laughs> hey, yes, you will. Um, this, yeah, uh, this technically is still a disadvantage because it considers you an enemy still. Okay. Uh, it is a, it is still a hostile creature. It's just not actively trying to hurt any of you. Okay, with, with disadvantage, that's a ten, Sal. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just hear screeched at you. You, you killed him. And then. The creature goes back to muttering. And Muck just shouts, Yeah, but he killed like three people. Muck, you don't speak Elvish. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> She's like getting a little. Sorry, I should have specified it. It, it yeah. responded in Elvish before returning Bye. to this other okay. language. Okay. All right. Bye. Um, maybe Nimbo will mention that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Nimbo will um, say, um, Well, we didn't want to. Uh, I, you know, I really tried to to see if there's a way we could do this without having to fight. Should we have let it kill us? One of you make another persuasion check. Um, uh, actually, at this point, persuasion would be for Nimbo. Okay. Make a persuasion. Can you have advantage for me chipping it? Yes. No, or... Well, it's a straight roll because it would have been a yeah. disadvantage. Okay. Persuasion, the big plus one. <laughs> The ten. Ooh. Um no response. Do you do you want to go back to the Shadow Fell? It's just what well, it's just it's quietly sobbing in its nest. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Nimbo's heart is breaking. <laughs> um Small if you creature. wanted what to, actually, name? it, it, mm, are you asking it its name? Yeah. It, uh, your AC is 13, right? You feel a glob of leaves just smack you in the face, uh, as you're leaning to talk into the burrow. I press the digitate to that clean. That was very rude of you. If any of you wanted to make a nature check to try to figure out if you might know what this creature is, you can do that, by the way. I mean, I'll do it, but I'm not very good at nature. So. Oh no, go <laughs> Nimbo. Nimbo. Uh, 17. 17 from Flirton. Uh, anyone else rolling? Nimbo is too distraught from like... Nimbo and, is, and... at this point, almost sobbing himself. <laughs> also, like, almost sobbing from the kind of awkwardness of not knowing what the right thing to do is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, do we just 
murder this thing to send it home or or leave it alone in suffering like yeah mm -hmm. um, i rolled a five i don't know what's going on okay um blurta it actually makes sense that you know what this creature is okay. um you've heard stories about these because they're relevant to your own heritage as an aladrin uh this creature is a darkling um there are ancient legends that speak of these fey creatures who betrayed the summer queen one of the deities in the fey wilds hmm. um and their true name was stricken from history but they instead took on the name darklings um they l tend not to dwell in woods um they are usually live in like underneath like settlements, uh, other species settlements, um, and they tend to work as thieves or assassins. These two seem to have made a nice home for themselves in this clearing. Uh, you're not entirely sure what they've been doing, but they're a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, and it's not particularly odd that you might find them in this plane. Um, they tend, they are, they're kind of like, they're not vermin. But they're like an invasive species. They've sort of scattered from the Feywild and have settled all over the plains even before the plains were separated. Um, but this creature is not from the Shadow Fell. So, so I, I relay that to the party sort of quietly and just. Yeah. You are a also that explains why it threw things at you when you asked for its name. That would make sense. You are, <laughs> you, you are a Darkling, correct? What is it that brings some of your folk to a wood in the middle of nowhere? This is not where one would normally expect to find you. It's it doesn't seem to want to talk to you anymore. I'm it's turned one. its if you look inside now, it's turned its back entirely to you and put its hood up and like sort of crouched its head down um to try to block you out. I haven't uh, approached the hollow yet. Um, can nope. I can I have a look at the bodies? Yes, of course. Of outside, like the turtle yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, would you, you can do either me investigation or medicine? Uh, what will I do? Uh, investigation. Cool. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, this is not with your advantage, by the way. Uh, no, I was just one roll. No. Okay. Um, 19. So you find um, the bear, ordinary bear, it's been gouged open, um, so its entire um, like abdomen has been ripped up with these big streaks, uh, essentially, that seem to match looking over at the, the moose's antlers. Um, the, the human corpse, um, you can find uh, there's a, a, a short bow and quiver. Um, looks like it had been drawn there's a, f a bunch of the arrows have been snapped and like they've been trampled um also again gouged open um possibly by the hooves this time the turtle with that big gash um on the belly um is carrying several items which um immediately uh draw your attention there is a spell book tucked uh, under the robe. Uh, looking inside, um, you can see three spells written. Uh, Fog Cloud, Unseen Servant, and Vortex Warp. Um, you also notice um, Tuda is wearing an earring, which is very strange, because turtles don't have really ears. ears. yeah. No. Um, so but it has kind of been, like, pinned to like a little flap of skin, essentially. It looks uncomfortable. It doesn't look like the, whoever, like Tuda thought this through very much. Um, you're not entirely sure what it is, but seems to be important given um, they went to this much effort to make sure to keep it on them. Um, other than that, the bodies, they've been decomposing for a couple of days, uh, so they don't smell great. But there isn't anything particularly interesting other than that. Okay. Then you said fog cloud, unseen servant, vortex warp. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So 
So if you get the materials to transcribe those, you can add them to your own. Um, okay, okay. Your own spellbook. Um, two things. First of all, um, turtles. You were talking about the ears. Mm -hmm. The um, like they they're strange in that they don't have an eardrum. Um, yeah. They just have. They still have inner ear bones, but there is no eardrum like, on turtles, okay. oh. um, which is very like hard like hard for hard for me to kind of understand how it all, how it all works um, other thing is uh, the bear yes um, you said a couple of days yeah a little questions? bit fresher than the other two okay but not by much looks Any... like maybe it came here to eat and then got jumped by a moose any flesh exposed plenty I would like to try and take some, but without anyone else seeing that I'm doing it. All right, go ahead and roll sleight of hand. Uh, it'll be against passive perceptions because they're the rest of them are not paying attention to you. Yeah. Uh, also, you get an inspira a d6 inspiration. I'm gonna wow. use it now just to, to add that in. Um, so You're that is looking to be at a 13. Yeah. So that is uh, that's 11 plus my uh, inspiration. So it's a d6. Yeah. Yeah. D6. Uh, 16. 16. Yeah. Um, you managed to carve off, like, enough- it's not a lot, because you don't want it to be too bulky, too noticeable, right? Mm. Um, but you managed to get, bunch. like, a meal's worth. Um, okay. like a steak, essentially. I'm gonna eat it, like, as soon as I can. Like, as soon as there's okay. an opportunity to do it. I mean, you you're can do it secret... right now. You- you're a secret carnival. I should've known. <laughs> Uh, yeah. you just kept um, this has From all been happening while Mark Nimbo and Lurta <laughs> have been trying to talk to the Darkling. The Darkling, it's the way you rolled on those persuasion deception checks, it's not going to talk to you. Uh, I will straight up tell you this right now. Um, you killed its friend and possibly its god, and it's angry. But hold on, we can't just leave like, you know, the person we came here to find is dead. Two other people are dead. You know, what's the right thing to do here? We, what what the, need do we even have? Is what were the people any... killed by? Were the people killed? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. like, what are their wounds like? Are they antler wounds or are they stab yeah. wounds? They're antler wounds. Is there any sign that the Darklings have interfered with the bodies at all? No. Not from, you can investigate. Actually, uh, if someone wants to roll me an investigation check to look around the stump, um, might be able to find evidence of what the Darklings may not do. Guidance? Guidance, go for it. Who's that for? Letter. Oh, right, I thought you, I'd use roll from then. Um, I, I did, well, I got a five. <laughs> okay, so I got... So who's your guidance for? Letter. Okay, so I got 13. 13. Um, yeah, it's not... So you have to dig around a little bit, um, but you can see more of these carvings um, of this moose um, around the base of the trunk as well. Hmm. Um, sort of tucked underneath the undergrowth. You have to push it aside slightly. You also find tucked behind it a fallen antler. Hmm. Normal color. For a moose. Hmm. Um, and more tufts of brown fur. Sort of as if something's been rubbing up against the against the tr uh, the trunk. I report all of that. So maybe this moose didn't come from the Shadowfell. Maybe something from the Shadowfell possessed or mutated this moose from a regular normal moose into into this. Grumpy monstrous. Could it have uh, wandered into the Shadowfell and wandered back out again? Would well, that that's be... the question. How did these? How did it even get here? How um, did you go would, to the Shadowfell? Would I know anything about, you know, because knowing about kind of deities and stuff, would I know anything about the boundaries between planes? Um, more than most, probably. You can make a religion check to see exactly how much you know on this specific topic. I'm rolling like dirt today. You're having my luck that I had last week, except when I was trying to stop 
um, from eating birds. <laughs> That's a seven. A seven. You, Shadowfell, like, life's a bit balance, right? People need to die so that other people can live. Death isn't bad. You just, you know people go to the Shadowfell when they die. Um, and generally, they don't tend to return unless someone brings resurrection magic into it. Uh, not doesn't seem like the kind of place you can probably just like wander into and wander back out. Um, not sure how a creature could become corrupted by the Shadowfell, though. Uh, I've never never heard of stuff just wandering in and out of a place like that. But we've seen a lot of weird stuff over the last couple of days. I think there were some lectures on that that were meant to come like next term. But I guess we I'll have, have to learn that stuff on that. the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an optional module anyway. It doesn't even count towards your final grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like after school club. Uh... <laughs> In yeah, uh, interplanar uh, like exobiology one hundred and one. <laughs> and the Shadowfell Appreciation Society. Yeah. Nice. I mean, my inclination then is just we should search around the general area, see if we can find any further hints to what. The moose might... came out of the like from within like the trees on one side of the clearing, so you could try to see like where it's been. It's definitely worth checking that out, and then when we do eventually go home, I think you know it's only fitting that we take these two back home. And at least some proof of this, this, this being, because someone else might know more than we do. But yeah, let's let's check Can it out. Can I hold the antler and then just blast it at the um, bottom so it break it off? <laughs> um, the one that was behind the trunk, or like, one of the ones on the moose? One of the ones on the moose. Go ahead and make a strength check. I'm gonna. I want to eldritch blast it off with. The... Um. <laughs> That would destroy it, right? Yeah, that would yeah. no. That that would do too much damage. You're, this is a this is a. You'll have to try like uh, Mark could try to like basically. Yeah, I, 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 I was like, look at the logistics of that, and then I'm like, mm, Mark, would you care to get me one of these antlers? But, I mean, the head's already half off. Take the head's head. really big, Nimbo. You're looking at it. This is a really. This is like an old like. Alpha male, essentially. It's like um, as big this as is our a, torsos. It's like you know when they hang them up in like restaurants and they find the biggest one they can. It's that. Can I do a strength check to see if I can take the whole head? And if not, I'll take absolutely. Yes. Okay. Oh, twenty-five, baby. <laughs> nice. Give me a nat twenty. Give me a nat twenty. Yeah. Nice. But, yeah. Um, just, like, twist you, it off. <laughs> you just sort of you put the. Like a chicken wing. Against its yeah. neck, and then push the head. Like you push and pull the sword while pushing the head. Mm -hmm. Comes off. I mean, there's like still some more of this weird black blood, like dripping out of it. Um, mm. But then you you just like heft it onto one shoulder. It's a it's a little bit heavier than that entire barrel full of cider you were carrying <laughs> last night. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, you've got an entire uh, strange monochrome moose head now. Hmm, how do I put that in my inventory? <laughs> <laughs> it's Monica not gonna fit in the bag. Let me just uh, okay. uh, put All that right. uh, out there. This is this is like you can carry this temporarily, probably. Yeah. Can we you strap need to it? Drop it to use your weapon. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good point. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get the antlers cut off and made into like cool weapons in themselves. Ooh, Absolutely, yeah. you can try to find someone. <laughs> just a moose battler. <laughs> like, sell them. They're like God's antlers. Yeah, a bunch of money. Mm. Uh, do you want to try to track where the moose might have come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, someone should right. do that. I don't know Whoever if it should be me. is doing the tracking <laughs> can make me a survival check, please. Not me. I have negative survival. Uh, I have plus three. I have plus That's three as good. well. I got plus uh, one. Do you, do you have proficiency? Um, uh, not in this one. No. Ah, uh, so we can't help. Well, well, yeah, can can I help him? Uh, I'll let you give guidance again. Okay, I'll guide him. Yeah. yeah. With, the, with the four? Mm -hmm. The four. No. Guidance is a very useful spell, so I'm happy for you to use that. It, 
Like, if, you could, if you're proficient and you want to help instead, that's probably better. But, um. So, anyone watching from the audience, if you're playing a cleric at home and you don't take guidance, gu guidance why? If you're playing a paladin and you take the whatever the holy um, fighting subclass uh, feature is, and you don't get some cleric cantrips and you don't take guidance, I'm also going to fight you. <laughs> um, but sorry, Sam, what did you roll? 19. 19, yeah. Um, you're you're feeling much better than you were yesterday and even this morning, because uh, you've had some proper food. Um, was, well, yeah, that, that bear was was pretty tasty. You've not probably never eaten bear before, but it was uh it was what you needed. And tracking where this moose came, I mean it was a big creature, it was sort of crashing through the undergrowth. Um, so you're following what is essentially a little deer trail um, for a while um, until you get just before the edge of this little wood that you're in um, and you notice something out of place um, that is, you spot it immediately at the base of a tree there is a swirling puddle of pitch black bubbling out of the ground and when the bubbles pop it's like it's it's not liquid it's not gas either when they pop it's like they were never there at all can i make an arcana on this one absolutely uh no and? No. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was gonna just sniff to see if i can tell anything about it be a fiend undead uh undead this smells it's it's like that faint whiff of undeath you picked up earlier at with the fence when you were scenting the air. Um it's similar. It's also it's it smells like the moose. You didn't pick up on the moose being undead earlier. But then you put that together with what Lurta and Nimbo have told you about the Shadowfell and this strange little puddle seems to be like pure distilled essence of that other plane can i look around and find like a snail or a woodlouse or something uh make an investigation check they've all run away because they're scared to fight um that is 14 14 uh yeah you can find a you can find a snail yeah, okay. um, so i just like pick it up and just dip it in the, <laughs> the, the second you touch it to the liquid I it very specifically don't touch it myself. The liquid or the snail? The, I touch the snail, the snail touches the, the liquid. Snail touches I do the not liquid. touch the liquid. Um, so, uh, the a second you touch it, you notice all of the color gets drained out of the snail. Uh, and you need to, you're gonna have to let it go if you, because it's quickly climbing up the snail, like, like towards the nope. shell. Um, you <laughs> Sorry, drop snail. it in, and it. You watch for a second, and eventually it begins to slowly crawl out. Black and white. Well, I think I have solved the mystery. So, small little point of order, just if we are continuing on as this adventuring group, can we please try and avoid cruelty to animals? <laughs> it's not cruelty, it's just... No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Never mind! This okay. is coming from the guy who just wanted to specifically kill birds with magic missiles last session. Yes. <laughs> the rest of us don't know that. Exactly. This is true. And That's also, true. also um, killing something to eat it is different from, let's dip a snail in something that could cause it great pain. I mean, I'm going to be doing a lot of killing. from the person who has to kill a random animal and leave it somewhere prominent every week. I'll eat some of it. <laughs> Which I don't know about, but... That's a fun item. Uh, may need to tell the audience more about that at some point. Um, okay, yeah, no. The, it, this pool does seem to be the origin. Um, it doesn't seem to have harmed the snail. The snail is just being a snail. It's it's just slowly starting to crawl along the ground. It's just goth now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Does the snail charge? Um... <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have like a spare jar or something? You know what? Um, Nimbo, if you want to go ahead and make a nature check. Or an animal handling. 
Still not rolling great. Was, was it nature or animal handling? Or whichever, you, whichever you prefer. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, it's just a snail. Yeah, as a, like, you you, you don't know what an it? angry snail would look like, but <laughs> so far it seems to just be behaving the way it was before Blurton. I, I squat right down so that my face is like real close to its face, and I say, <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry if that hurt or did anything. Um, sorry, we're, we're just working this out as much as you are. Sorry. And I know that it, it, you know, I can't understand its reply, but you know, the thought that counts. It, it, if, if it replied, it was not in any language you could recognize as a language. Mm -hmm. so, it, at least that was separate from, from what the moose was doing. Do I have um say like a little glass jar or vial or something? Uh possibly. Let me check your inventory, what kind of stuff. Um You've got an ink bottle. I do have an ink bottle. Oh, but shit. it's 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 got ink in it. <laughs> okay, the, the thing is I'm what I'm thinking is we should probably take this snail to some kind of expert. So that we have a live specimen. I mean, we could put it in your box. <laughs> mm. That's a great idea. You don't know about the box, I don't think. But <laughs> no, they all saw you go into the box. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, so they don't, yeah, they don't know. And then get flung back out of it. They, <laughs> no, actually, Em and, and Mark missed that bar. Part. Yeah. What's but... in my mess kit in D and D? My mess kit. Um, like a plate and cutlery. It, uh, it might, like, it might have like a pot. Yeah. Um, can... I mean, I've got a tinder box. I can, I can. You, I'll, I'll say you've got some kind of thing that you can put the. Um... Yeah, you've got like cooking equipment and stuff. You probably, yeah. like, you can put it in a pot and then put the lid on it and then like secure the lid with rope. Not in the spite. Yeah. Not in the salt shaker. That's. <laughs> <laughs> that would be animal. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. You can take the you can take the the monochrome snail with you if you want. Okay. Yes. That's and I'll, and I'll put some it. plants with some little plants with it, so it's got something oh, to eat. That's cute. Who's After... got it? Um, just why not? I was assuming that I would have it just because it's I was the one who was um, doing it. That we take it. Perfect. So. Uh. So monochrome. Nail. Um, alive. Brackets. Uh, <laughs> question mark. For now. <laughs> yeah, Blurter Snail was the new Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> <laughs> could I um? Could I get out a piece of parchment and try to sketch down a map of where this is? Like, because I know you know where ha where we've travelled from the town to the field. From the field to the cops to the woods yep. and then mm -hmm. down this path uh yeah absolutely um you can make a survival check vias guide me mm -hmm. um oh, get fucked <laughs> do you show that at the gods <laughs> yes yeah. Uh, Another well, no, actually, no, no, Vias... being walks into the clear. Vias oh. came through. Vias gave me a four. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nimbo <laughs> wasn't picking up his end of the bargain. Mm -mm. It's so that that makes it a total pens, of pens eight. are so small in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's a piece of charcoal and it keeps like snapping. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. With a dexterity of minus one, so it's his <laughs> big strong hands, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you do manage to get, like, a vague indication. Someone who's familiar with the area might, like, might know what wood you're talking about, but then would need to, like, look around to try to find where this specific location is. But it's... I'll take it. it yeah, it, it could work. I mean, I would say pragmatically, the most sensible thing to do at this point is to somehow cover this pit so no more large creatures fall into it. I assume the villagers can probably deal with like an evil true or something, but maybe not this smooth or like a wolf or something. Uh, M, are you still keeping an eye out for birds? 
Uh, yeah, always. That's just my okay. state of being. Yep. There's, um... <laughs> there's, uh, what... The type of bird sitting on a tree that you don't recognize is just looking down at you. Um, it is also black and white. That was a magpie. Um, oh, uh, wait, it no, is, no, it no. is like this big. It is like passerine. Mm, and it's your tit. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish. Uh, I'll point this out to the rest of the group, the yeah. rest of the group saying like, there's something odd about that bird. Uh, would I know specifically anything in, that's weird about it? Make with a my nature, nature check. Nature check. Okay, now I'm rolling. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, you recognize when, the when shape I'm rolling of to the look bird? at a fucking bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you recognize the shape of the bird. Uh, it looks like a great tit, but where great, great tit? Great tits have like <laughs> greenish coloration on them and like yellowy green. I mean, there's all sorts of. Sorry. <laughs> this advantage is your next roll. <laughs> Got him. Worth it. Um, it's a great tit, except for the fact that it is devoid of color. Looks like someone else is um, been playing in the puddles. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, Blue. I can throw my hand axe at it and just, mm. you know. Cut that off. You I, get I, what I mean? I think it would just look a great tit and a hand axe come together. That's not gonna. It's gonna be nothing left of the thing. Good point. Can and... I? Sorry. I've got a little bag of sand in my inventory for reasons I'm not entirely clear on, but. Uh... I just, I've got the same, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna take just a little scoop of sand and just drop it onto the puddle and see if it floats, if it sinks in. It reappears. Um, so if it's just a little bit of sand, you watch it, um, like sink in, but you can see where it is on the ground. So, so is, is it as it sort of calls like dimples in the liquid? Not dimples, it's just fallen through it right. and it's existing within this strange bubbling. It's not, it's not, it's not exactly liquid. Okay. Mm. It's not behaving like a liquid should. It seems to just be pure, like, energy rather than. Okay, so, else. So, so it's not even like fluid. fluid. <laughs> exactly. Uh, can I lean over Blurter's head uh, and say, and cast uh, Detect Magic with my Furbolg ability? Yeah, um, definitely magical. What? But this Detect Magic. Of magic? Um. It probably necromancy because it's just Shadowfell stuff. Cool. Can um, I get a really long stick? Yes. And see if it goes down like more than it should do. Uh, you get a really long stick. You poke it. The stick stops where the ground is. Oh damn it! Worth it. <laughs> when you withdraw I... the stick, does any of this stuff like adhere to the stick? Um, no. I mean, we've we've definitely, I would say, found the source of um, of these troubles. But I, I think this might be a bit beyond us to actually deal with this, unless we want to see what becoming monochrome is like. But it didn't seem too great for that moose. So maybe we cover it and go tell. You know, we can go back to the village and write a letter back to back to the temple, see if they can send someone to deal with it, because yeah. I mean, I know we're not really paid, but this is beyond our pay grade. Is the baddie Anish Kapoor? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I... Maybe he's gonna show up for a guest spot eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with Nimbo. I, think... I agree with Nimbo. Yeah. That sounds prudent. I mean, I mean covering it was Blurter's idea. My, yeah, my information is just, yeah, just put something over the top so it's not going to get contacted with by anything so much, but, and then we just let someone deal with it in the proper sense. So should we, uh, like, you know, like a, like a kind of orangutan nest, like, break a load of uh, branches hmm. that are like, you know, 
few feet long and kind of lay them over each other to kind of cover up this scary puddle so that we don't get any more scary meese. That, uh, that sounds burned to me. Is it worth us trying to leave some sort of warning? Like, so that someone doesn't wander through and step in? Yes, yes. Yeah, good shout. But yeah. maybe we don't tell them what it actually is, because maybe they're looking for it for some kind of nefarious reasons. It's like, warning, bees. <laughs> but then how but then how is that helpful? They'll be looking what if they're looking up. for bees? <laughs> That's also, good, we want to distract them. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Wait, are we your... trying to get people uh, to fall into this or not? From your, <laughs> no. earlier, from, uh, and from your earlier survival check, this doesn't look like an area where people really come. Um, okay. Uh, and if there that. are people who'd come here, um, it would be people who live in Berfell because it's the nearest place. Um, so we can just tell the people in Berfell. Yeah. You was, you're, you're thinking that they would probably tell other people to stay away then. Because we've got the, the head of the moose, we've got the the dead hunter from the town, we've got, you know, the the dead um, uh, national service mage, we've got the location carefully noted down of this scary puddle. I'm pretty sure I've got it right. Um, and a snail. And a scary snail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all carrying our weight. <laughs> okay, so should we should we swing by the swing by the, the clearing, okay. pick up the the two um, you know former former alive people, and head back to the village? Yeah. Well, so are we so are we just putting some like brush over the top of it just to stop any animals wandering into it again? Uh, well, and if if we want to leave a, a sign, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, I'm inclined to not to leave a sign because I think that would be more conspicuous if we did. Agreed. Okay. Cool. So yeah, branches. Yeah, it's easy enough to cover yes. it up. Um, as you start layering branches on it and take an inspiration from your orang utan, orang utan facts earlier, um, it's e like the it's not seeping out. Um, it really does seem to be localized in this location, and as you hide it, it's staying where it is. Um, so you're just covering it up with stuff. Um, you go back to the clearing to collect the bodies. As we swing by the stump, I would like to kind of like, not trying to be scary, but probably ends up being very scary. Kind mm -hmm. of put my face up to the hole in the, in the in the in the stump and say, "Sorry," and cast healing word at level one. Okay. Because I think because I think I did one point of damage. You to that did dark do ring. one point of uh, damage to the <laughs> and dark I feel kind of Um yeah, you, this faint glow of energy, just um, the rest of you see this, uh, like the inside of the stump glows faintly with Mimbo's magic and then vanishes. Um, you, don't, you don't hear a response. You hear a soft scratching, like carving into wood. Probably some That's sad so stories getting recorded there. <laughs> Dear diary. <laughs> Day I lost my friend and my moose. <laughs> and and my you God. for life. He's just like drawing each of your faces to remember it forever. Yeah. This is actually the final boss of the entire campaign. <laughs> this is. It's going to come back in a mech suit. Yeah. <laughs> 70 foot tall with lasers. And... <laughs> Sometimes it's also you try not to cry. <laughs> You folks can't hear it, but the music in the background is quite sad right now. It, it all lined up <laughs> perfectly. Perfect. Um, so I'll I, probably carry at least one of the bodies. I just checked your carry capacity. You can carry both of them. It'll be a bit, like, cumbersome, um, but you, the rest of you watch as Nimbo, who's quite lanky, right? Lanky, but, like, you know, not... I wouldn't say skinny. You can definitely see no, there's okay. some heft... There's yeah, under those right. clothes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Nimbo, who you were expecting? Okay, maybe it's not gonna be as strong as Muck. Muck is mm. buff. Nimbo just picks up first the hunter, who is also relatively like thin, um, and then this quite large and like cumbersomely shaped turtle with the shell. Um, Nimbo just carries so both of them. It's back. it's like I think I've got like the the turtle 
on one shoulder, kind yeah. of, I'm leaning over that way, and then under the other arm yes. is the hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's it's going to be hell on my back, but yeah, you know, I'm young. Yeah. Like um, 33 year old Khalil would never do this. You lift <laughs> with the legs. <laughs> I think Mark looks over and just gives like a nod of, you know, okay. Uh, nod. <laughs> you make Not your way bad. back out of this woodland, retracing your steps earlier when you followed uh, those bear tracks um, to this location, and eventually find yourself approaching the sheep fields belonging to Crota Bundy, the farmer. Um, and you see this um, this old stooped man is staring at a fence, the fence that you you climbed over. You can see one of the fence posts has fallen down. Uh, there's a couple of sheep grazing on the other side of the fence. Um, he's just glaring at it. He's got like a hayseed between his teeth. Um, looks up at you squinting as you approach. closer Mark squints back you get Just even closer instinct. and right as you like come up to him he hasn't said anything yet about the moose head or the bodies it's when you come entirely up to him you realize he probably couldn't make out any details because he suddenly startles like oh shit I, I see you defeated it yep. was this the morning you were talking about I, that's what I told you that's the morning. Big white moose eat sheep. Yeah, and kills people. Yep. Squints at Nimbo. We um. Oh, that's yeah, too bad. We found, we found your friend and and our colleague. That's uh. Well, it's a good thing you killed her. We have ensured that this will never happen again. We have made exactly. a deal with the Queen of the Mornlings, so that as long as no one goes into that wood, there should not be any further problems. Well, that's good to hear, lass. Thank you. Um... I'm not even gonna make a deception uh... check on the cat. <laughs> no, he yeah. just straight up whatever you tell this man about Mornlings, he's going to believe you. Um he is like he just anything he, he, you're, you guys are now Mornling experts as far as he's concerned. Um Why don't uh, we take those um to the inn and we can get someone to uh go and tell the families, yeah. Yeah, is is um is there a is there somewhere we can send a letter from in town? Oh, my nephew can take it. Great, thank you. Hi. It's good to let people know when people die. Otherwise, well, people don't know, do they? Slowly so, starts so limping back. Yeah. Um. You eventually you make it to the inn. There's not a lot of people in the village. Uh, it's the middle of the day um, right now, so... Well, mid-morning, probably, at this point. Um, so you assume everyone's probably tending to their own fields. Um, as you enter the inn, uh, the Leonin comes out from uh, behind uh, one of the doors. Uh, one of the closed doors that you... Um, well, Yarrow would have noticed the day before. Ah, you've returned! Oh! oh. Oh dear. Well, this is very bad, no? Yes, it is oh. no, not the outcome we had hoped for. Poor pal. And poor. I forget your, your wizard friend's name, but. Tudor. Is that a moose? Tudor. Yeah, it's a moose. Mm hmm. Huh. But not, not a normal moose. Um, no, I see that, no. If you'll take a look here, and I like, you know, peel back one of the eyelids. Not peel, but like I, you know, pull it up. And show the kind of like pitch black eyes, and like, you know, as as Mark kind of rotates it with her arms, and like, look, and you see it, it's oozing, um, kind of a black goo instead of blood. Uh, excuse me. Xanthi leaves the inn. 
you hear the sound of someone throwing up. <laughs> he did not need those details. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back in, wiping uh, his mouth. That was, um, can you please leave that outside? I, I do not want it in my, my nice, my nice inn. Um, we need it. No, we need it. Outside, we, I mean, please. we can leave it. We can leave it on the, in, you know, in the in the smoking area. There's the little court. There's like a little courtyard outside of the inn, um, where like people to like leave their horses and stuff. Um, you could leave it. Cool. There. I'll go. I'll go with the with the head. I'm thank you. The thank you. Um. Well, so, this is not what I was expecting, frankly. After last night, I thought you would discover that Crota is just. Very bad at building fences. No offense, Crota. What? I mean, no, the they two, killed the Morn like The two aren't mutually exclusive. Like it, it could be, it could be both. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in fences. Anyway, neither am I. But only Crota sheep ever escape. I think the overall summary here is that no one can go into this particular wood again. For, the, for everyone's safety, I would advise that being spread around everyone. Uh, oh, and certainly. Also, also, maybe don't let animals roam in there either. We do not tend to let our animals roam, uh, they, except for Crota. Um, Crota is has left with Muck uh, and is still like it's like kind of poking the moose head. Um, I know some more than all right. Ah, I knew I wasn't crazy. No, yeah, you got it, got it in one, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get my nephew. I'm gonna give you kids a reward. You deserve it. Cheers. It starts limping, like, away from the inn, uh, further down the street. While he's uh, going and getting the nephew, yes. can I write a quick note to, um, to the high priestess of uh Berea yeah. kind of set us on our on our quest um basically outlining what we have discovered and including my excellent very accurate map um, absolutely um yeah the bar the bartender gives you some paper um as well so you can you can copy the map over uh as well he he says he will keep a copy so he can show it to everyone so they know where not to go uh, essentially or, or maybe we don't. Maybe we just get the, the townsfolk to avoid that area of the woods entirely. Don't maybe don't tell them exactly where the thing they should avoid is, because then it's kind of like, you know, when there's like a, you know, a, uh, a big red. Uh, uh, well, what's the fantasy equivalent of a button? Target <laughs> hmm. lever. Yeah, you know, you know when there's um, uh, you know, a big red rope tied from the ceiling around a hook on the wall. And it says, "Do not untie." You know, uh, you yes. kind of you immediately want to untie it. And then the chandelier it falls on your head. Exactly. Yeah. So yes. maybe we, we will don't, tell people. We don't tell them where the red rope is. Southeast of Broda's farm. We do not go there. That that sounds great. Thanks. I will not tell people it is haunted by mornlings. That is a stupid idea. No one will believe us. I will tell them of this strange white creature. And we don't mean blurted. I was gonna say, but I was outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, eventually, Crota returns. Um, you're coming inside, lass. You're staying with the head. Mm, keeping yeah. an eye on it. I'm just keeping. Making keeping sure it doesn't come back. You can see the nephew is like standing, be like sort of behind his uncle, just looking at this moose, and then looking at his uncle, and just like. I'm just like, stop. They enter the inn. Um, nephew takes your your written letter and map. Um, all right, I'll uh, I'll run these down to the Golden Isle uh, immediately. This seems like a. Uh... You know, we really didn't think there was a creature. Honestly, we were on the fence. No pun intended. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good one. Um, all right, yeah, I'll uh, 
repair my uncle's fence when uh, when I get back. But I'll take this. Uh, anything else you need me to tell folks? It's all on here. It should be all in the letter. Um... Brilliant. I'll, I'll head off now then, because the bridge is uh, really long, and uh, I'd like yeah, to get back before. The sheep sometimes as well. Maybe check the sheep forecast. Well, sheep should only be in the morning, so should have uh, should have missed those. Not meant to bring sheep in. Uh... You can't. Yep. Yeah, you can't bring them in any time of day. That would be crazy. No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, well, it's a great job that there's there's guards there to, to regulate that whole system. Otherwise, there'd just be chaos. Exactly. Exactly. You get it. Uh, well, lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for uh, helping my uncle out. And uh, I'll. Uh, well, maybe I'll see you when you pass back through. That's uh, good. Best good of luck to you. Yeah. Thank you. Stay away Go. from any weird puddles. Strange, um, strange advice, but sure. It'll make sense if it makes sense. You a slightly weird look. Nimble um, made a really big pee on the way over here. <laughs> you hear me laugh from outside. Question is, um, is that deception or not? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is just like, he'll believe anything right now because the Mornling may or may not have been real this whole time. Um, says goodbye to Muck on the way out as well. Um, Crota inside is um, loudly telling Zenzi, the bartender, I knew it! You all thought I was mad! It was real! They proved it, and oh, you deserve a reward, kids. You are listening. My lamb are the best, and I make the best lamb jerky. For each of you, also for your friend outside. Hands over like four parcels of lamb jerky, um, probably enough to survive off for like three days each. Um, mm. and because I know the youth, you don't work for free. So, I had a good season last year. I'll give you ten gold each. That's a fair price for a morning. You can keep mine. I'm good. I'll take mine. Uh, make a persuasion check, Mug. Or a deception check, depending on how you're feeling. Persuasion. Oh no! Nope. Uh, it sounded me? like a ten. Nope. You back? Can you hear me? Yep. Eleven. Yep. You're back. Eleven. Ten plus one. Eleven. Ten plus one. Cool. Um, eleven. You know what? I'm. I'm not gonna have people thinking Kruda Bundy doesn't pay his workers. Alright. You tell people about my good name. And we'll make sure this money About my lamb jerky. Yeah. Deal. Muck, if you don't want the gold, I'll swap you the gold for the jerky. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna eat this. So. That's a good point. Sure. Deal. All right, you now have uh, six days worth of lamb jerky, Mark. And I get. Oh wait, gold. so we so we don't have we when you say four pieces of lamb jerky, that wasn't each. That was you get one parcel each. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Each I, parcel I we had four is parcels three each. days worth. That that makes more yeah. sense. Yes. Yeah. We're on the road. You've you've got you already had rations. You've now got some more. Um. And depending on, you might meet someone who loves Crota's lamb jerky. You don't know. Might be uh, us. Yes, and, and M, you now have 20 gold instead. Oh, I'm gonna have to get back to my sheep and fix up what uh, that Morland did. So, thank you. And, uh, God's be with you, all of you. Thank you. Is there, is there somewhere safe we can? Oh, okay. I'll ask the barman then. Yeah. Is there somewhere safe we can leave these two deceased people until you know someone can come from the aisle to pick up? I've, uh, I have an uh, an ice house uh, outside, and 
in the back. I can put them in there, yes. Thank uh, you. Well, I, I will help you carry them, yes. It is only right. You can leave the, the bodies there. I assume in the letter you said there were two bodies. Or at least yeah. one body. Well, I, I, the other I said... Local. I would have said that we found two, but, yeah. you know, I assumed that them. they would only come and pick one up. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, Paul's not got much family, but, uh, we will... What accent am I doing right now, guys? <laughs> um, mixing the two up. Um, we will, uh, ensure he has a good, a good funeral. Yes. I will cater it. And we will sing and dance in his honor. And cry. That is right. Closes everything lives, eyes. everything dies. Well, you are very good kids. Um, will you, will you stay and and rest, or must you head on? We are kind of on the job. What do you all think? What time is it? Close to but... noon. Hmm. Well, I say, might as well head on. Personally. Yeah. Okay. Do we want a short rest or anything? Lunch? He's got stew and he's got potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and pretzels. I'm happy um, to I, keep I, going. I'm alright yeah. either way. Um, cool. If it, if it will help your fighter stuff, you can um, get I'm just going to get some pretzels for the road. Right. Uh, nice. Yeah, you can absolutely get some pretzels for the road if you want to. How much were they again? Uh, well, no. That was uh, an answer. Where are my pretzel costs? Uh, you can get uh, one pretzel for one silver. Okay. With mustard. Okay. Still whole grain. Um, it seems like he switched to French. <laughs> <laughs> Overnight. In like eight hours. <laughs> um, Nimble? Uh, Mark, any interest? Oh, yeah, yeah. A yeah. nice mustardy one would be great. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah, I'm so glad you like my pretzels. Uh, yep, Not I about you. I, I grew up around here. You know, it, it's, it's a taste of home. It is so much better than the crayfish uh, dip they make in Lissol. I mean, that's still nice, but it's not It's not the same, you know? It's it not as pungent. Right? It doesn't have that kind of kick. Exactly. I like it. I'm very glad. No, the crayfish. I like the crayfish. I am still very glad. Next time you come, I will give you more mustard, and you will you will know mustard is better. Whatever. Well, next time you pass through Bearfell, just know the Royal Unicorn is always open. Will you have vegetarian options next time? I will have at least potatoes. I will try to buy more vegetables when the next harvests come in. Maybe let's... Should we... Let's go. Ooh. Uh, yeah, even as a even as a cleric of um, kind of storm and, and you know, frost and, and, and stuff like that, brooding clouds, the tension in this atmosphere is palpable to Nimbo <laughs> with a passive perception of 15 <laughs> passive perception is 13 but okay I'm sorry passive insight sorry 15 sorry <laughs> yes yeah in terms of vibe yeah. check <laughs> there's a vibe check right now and then Mark are very angry at this bartender who is trying to be just very nice to everyone yeah, so for th completely think, separate reasons I think Nimbo's gonna do the whole like you know he's got a big wingspan he's gonna kind of just like scoop up his friends and kind of pivot yep. <laughs> towards mm -hmm. the door <laughs> yes um and you leave the small uh, village of Bearfell and set out um, onto the Andel Plain proper. Um, walking away from the river, um, the Kalar River, and onto this wide open expanse. Um, familiar to you, Nimbo, probably less so to the other three. Um, 
it is not entirely empty, but it is very flat. Um, there's the same little woodlands that you found yourself in this morning, dotted around the place. You can see plumes of smoke. Not near the road. Um, and road is perhaps a bit generous. It's not paved. It's just a very well-worn track um, that is leading towards the cliffs you can see rising up in the distance. You begin under this midday sun to make your way towards the Trammel Cliffs and eventually the Citadel. And I would like one person who, who is someone who would be keeping an eye on the road as you are walking who, who would be least distracted um me maybe all right go ahead and roll me a uh, d4 please Ooh. two two uh okay and then go ahead and roll me a d6 oh boy with these, it's always hard to know whether a high number is good or a high number is bad. <laughs> a two. A two. Um, okay. In that case, um, we will discover exactly what Muck, stop, what Muck sees after we take a quick break. Ah! We get into things. Uh, so we'll see you all again here in ten minutes' time. Ten minutes. Oh, well, I gotta check my notes. <laughs> Can you say all of that again? For reasons. Uh, wait from, <laughs> from where? <laughs> Just that we're taking a ten-minute break. We've got. We're a... taking a ten-minute break, and we will see you again soon. Perfect. Sam, I'm concerned. There was just a break in the audio. It's fine. We're all good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. Um, all right. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna go. And as this is Short recorded, we can make a break as, as long as we want. <laughs> I don't want to ask Sam to edit a four hour long video, please. We're not doing that. Um, no, everyone, please do feel free to go and uh, take a quick break. Uh, there will be some other uh, things which might be happening. So, quick yeah, question before, before we go. Yes. Meg's fall asleep behind me. Can you hear her snoring? No. That's okay then. <laughs> Great. Okay, back in 10 minutes, folks. Back in 10 minutes.
And we're back! Uh, left off at a slightly strange moment, because my brain is leaking out of my ears. But Muck, keeping an eye on the road as our party has traveled, at this point, uh, 45 minutes to an hour from Bearfell. Um, it's been quiet, you haven't encountered anyone else yet. Um, and you see in the distance, you can see um, some herds, uh, a herd of bison um, grazing, just not too close to where you are, but um, not an uncommon uh, species uh, in this region. Uh, Muck, as you're keeping an eye out for anything, any potential threats, uh, yeah. any, anything that might not be quite right, uh, you've seen some really strange stuff these past couple of days. Mm. And you're scouting the ground mainly, and then you look up and you notice two large shapes circling overhead big white wings attached to a you first think it's another moose four legs slightly spindly horse-like head circling in the sky a bit too high for you to make out many details these flying horses just soaring on the currents. Are they white or nova? Uh, they seem to be. Guys, uh, I don't know. I've not seen. There's some shit going on up there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, they look like flying horses. Can I guide myself and have a look and see if I like recognize them at all? Uh, yeah, this would be a this could be a religion check. Okay. Uh, can I arcana it? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it doesn't. I'm, it's more afraid. It's my religion is exactly the same. Yes. Fifteen. Fifteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, yeah, you both um, recognize these not from any ever having seen them, uh, but they are very prevalent in stories um, and. They're a celestial creature that weren't sealed. Like, not all of them were sealed away um, when the planes were separated. Um, they look like Pegasuses. Pegasi. Um, Pegasus. Blurt. Pegasi. <laughs> Pegasusush. <laughs> Zusush. Um, Blurta, you know that Pegasus. Um, there's parts of their bodies that can be used for magical means, um, in elixirs and such. Uh, Nimbo, you know the Pegasi are, like, the messengers of the gods, essentially. Um, wow. And as they see the four of you, one of them starts to arc closer to you. And they were, they were quite high up, and as one of them starts to get within maybe 50 40 30 feet dropping down the second one following it's a little bit slower oh my god um, they're coming closer i'd like everyone who's looking at them to make a perception check please uh 14 13 11 my bad rolls of return I get one good roll and it's for looking at a bird. <laughs> These are not birds. This is your problem. Um, <laughs> M, you, you've probably, you might have heard stories of Pegasi before, but and you know, hey, they look like that probably. Uh, Nimbo, same. You don't really see much. Muck and Blurta, you, as you look at this one that is closer, um closer to you right now um you see details that look off um not in its pigmentation it's got like it's clearly it's it looked white it's more like cream colored really now that it's coming closer um but you notice that as it's now starting to accelerate towards you where it should have hooves where you were expecting hooves, you see these long taloned claws. And oh, as shit. its mouth opens, you see these sharp teeth. I need everyone to please roll initiative. Oh lord. 
14. Rightly cocked. That's worse, but I'll take it because it wasn't cocked. Um, One again, Kelly. Seven. Like... <laughs> oh my god. Um... I think I'm just I'm getting them out of the system, you know? Yeah. So, but that brings you to that technically brings you to a zero initiative, doesn't it? What? No, I rolled a, a natural two. Oh, okay. So you didn't roll a natural one again. No, no, no. I um, made that one myself. Gotcha. Although, you know, as a cleric, it'd be good on bringing up the group. Uh, M? Uh, I got 14. 14? Uh, Muck? Um, 13, I think. Right. Sorry, I'll double check. That's <laughs> right. Uh, Blurta? 7. I think I cleared it, but I got thirteen. Oh, you know, you got a fourteen. I can see it in the. In oh, the great! Chat. Thank um, you. What's your What's your and M's dex, please? My dex is nineteen plus four. Yeah, I think M's gonna go first. Plus one. Yeah. All right, um, M, you are up first. Um, do we need a map? You see, yes, we do need a map. Sorry, I forget that I need to switch you guys over to the map. Do remind me. Um, this is what you see. You are on this road. Um, there are these two flying creatures. One of them, the one closer to you right now, is about 30 feet away. Um, the one further away is 45 feet up in the air. Um, it is coming towards where you are on this dirt track. Um, there's, like, bushes and some rocks and things around, but there's no, like, high vantage points or anything. Um, what would you like to do? I am Sorry. still... Oh, so, I was going to launch a fireball at the nearest one. Okay, go for it. We'll go ahead and roll your attack. Yep. That is going to be... A natural one. Um, this creature is... It's quick. Um, despite its size, it is significantly larger than any of you. Um, but it, like, vaults as this fireball shoots past uh, its wing. Um, and continues its uh, to head straight for Blurta. Anything else you want to do? Mm, no, not in that case. Alright. Uh, in that case, Muck, it's your turn next. This creature is starting... It's still 30 feet up in the air. Um Okay, in that case I'm gonna use my I mean, that's a bonus action. I am going to It's coming towards Blurter, is it? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna da, da, da. That's my I'm gonna help Blurter by distracting um the creature as it's coming down. Okay. And then as a bonus action, I'm gonna regain 1d10 plus three hit points. Hit points. Go for it. So you're giving Blur to the help action. Yep. Awesome. So, so say that again, it's 1d4. 1d10 plus three is what I get to regain. No, help. no, you get the help action, uh, Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. sorry. Um, so you get advantage on your next uh, roll, I believe. Oh, how hurt is my? Uh, I, I, with my roll, I'm gonna have 18 hit points out of 28. Well, I mean, if you were visibly hurt after the last fight, I probably would have healed you, but I, I should should have uh, it. Would bad. have, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, um, don't worry. I should have reminded you as well because we ended right, I got at the end slots. of combats, but yeah. Yeah, don't um, worry, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, and you all do still have a healing potion as well, do remember. Yeah, oh, that's so. true. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Um, which is only 2d4 plus 2, but... Uh, okay, action, bonus action, would you like to move at all? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I probably, if I'm distracting it, mm -hmm. then I probably want to draw it away from the others. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to be a hero and just like, fucking run here because then i think i'll still be within range for people to cast spells at it yep. but maybe not for the direct um physical blows okay 
All right. Um, just so you know, the help action specifically is to uh, give a creature advantage on their next attack. That's. But does that help you, Blighter? Um, I mean, yeah, it it'll help me on my Eldritch Blast, I believe. Yeah. Perfect. Um, That's fine with me. Yeah, or it gains advantage on the next ability check it makes to perform the task you're helping with. Um, so, if you wanted to try to draw it away, it would need to be like a persuasion check, essentially. Oh, would it? Okay, yeah. I'll roll persuasion. That's fine yeah. with me. I'll let you do that as well as giving the help action. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Persuasion. 15 plus 1, 16. 16, nice. Um, yeah, the creature seems to. Hey, it, it definitely is aware of you as you're like sort of trying to big yourself up, trying to make as if you might be running away from it. Um, it is now the strange, possibly not quite Pegasus's turn. Um, it is going to continue its path, uh, flying another 30 feet down towards Blurta first. Um, it's going to try to lash out at Blurta with its claws. Um, that will be a uh, 22 to hit, I'm afraid. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> um, Blurta, as this creature, which now did you see it up close, um, definitely not a Pegasus. Definitely not a Pegasus. Uh, you take nine points of slashing damage as the front claws rake into you uh, and it continues to fly towards Muck. But first, um, Hellish Rebuke. Go for it. Yep. That is that so a. Just, so there's just like a moment of like confusion on her face. It's just like, why would a horse be attacking us? <laughs> and then <laughs> just like when she sort of is hit by it, it's like this isn't a horse at all. Uh, so it needs to make a dex save for me, please. Um, that is probably a failure. That's a nine. Oh yeah, no, that's... sorry, eleven. Still, Still a fail. Failure. Yep. Yeah, it's uh. Uh, that's uh, 17 Good points spell. of fire damage. 17 points of fire damage? Yep. That's... It's 3d6. It's 3d10. 3d10. Is it? Oh, it, yeah. okay, yeah. Mm. What am I conf I'm confusing it with something. Uh, yeah, this um, burst of flame lashes out as the creature flies past you. You also get... You can take an attack of opportunity if you want. I don't know if you have any weapons on uh, well, I mean, Wouldn't that be two reactions? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, Hellish yeah. Rebuke is a reaction. It, it, uh, Hellish Rebuke is a reaction already. Um, yeah, this creature is flame searing its feathery wings, um, continues its path straight towards uh, Muck. It's still about, like, five feet off the ground, uh, but it's now definitely up in Muck's face. Um, okay, that brings us- the other one is going to, uh, go fly the other, like, 45 feet down straight towards, uh, Nimbo. Uh, also, not- it's not on the ground, it's staying up in the air, it's also gonna try to, uh, rake at you with its claws. Um, that's a 20 to hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you take 13 points of slashing damage. Cool. Um, as it, I, it just claws partially through your armor. As that happens, uh, you see kind of uh, the the pain uh, kind of it, it you know ripples across uh, Nimbo's body, but it also you see the air around Nimbo kind of almost like thicken. You know, uh, obviously not in this universe, but when you see a jet going fast than the speed of sound and it builds mm -hmm. up a shockwave in front of it of pressure yeah. um so i'm going to use wrath of the storm mm -hmm. uh to uh make it take 2d8 thunder damage nice um and uh so let me roll that where's my d8s where are my d8s at all right it's gonna be nine points of thunder damage nine points of thunder damage um oh it can it can make a deck save for half Nat 19. Um, so that uh, it will only take four points of thunder damage. Um, but it's it's knocked back briefly uh, by this sound wave before it flies closer yet again, um, bearing its fangs at you. Um, it is now Blurto's turn. Okay, 
I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Horrible things. Um, and I am going to um, move. Is this like a tree or a hedge? Well, what are you looking at? Uh, that thing there. That's it's like a bush. Difficult can I, terrain. Can I get inside the bush? Sure. It's not very comfortable. It's a bit. It's a bit thorny. Well, I mean, basically, I just want a bit of cover for. It's not. It's not going to give you cover. Okay. So was that there? I think. Yeah. Um, in which case, um, which of them is more injured right now? Uh, the. Um, probably it's the one near near Muck that's taken more damage. Okay. Um, from what you could tell. In which case, I am just going to move. Wait, let's have a quick look. No, I'm out of that. Um, no, I should have short rested because then I would have had an extra spell back, but I didn't, so it's fine. Um, you fucked up. So I guess I'm just going to scooch. Uh, these uh, grids are also 10, 20, 30, so back there. Mm -hmm. um, off the edge of the screen as usual. Let's let's bring it, say, there. Maybe you can see me then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so Eldritch Blast with advantage against the one fighting Muck. Yep. Um, Uh, so that will be a dirty 20. Yeah, that hits. Um, then we shall do the actual roll. Ugh. A one on the roll, so that is five. Boo. Damage and is I... damage. It is damage, and then I will throw that fiery thing on top of it. Um, okay. Which I need to find again. I have too many powers. Um... Um, Genie's Wrath, so an extra two points of fire damage. Uh, okay, an extra two and points. And I will push it uh, ten foot backwards. Uh, and you will push it ten foot backwards. Into okay. A <laughs> um, this, that just happens automatically, doesn't it? I believe so, yes. Um, cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it was flying, so it's kind of gets tangled up in the branches. Its wings sort of too big for the space it is currently in. Hmm. Uh, it'll probably be bad there. Um, actually, no, the hedge is difficult terrain. It's now, it's like stuck in the hedge slightly. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna need to use Fuck some Fuck your of... fucking monster horse. Um, then that brings us to Nimbo. Okay, uh, that hurt. So, as a bonus action, I'm going to drink my uh, healing potion. Yep. So that'll be five points of healing. Again, these rolls killing me. Literally. Um, <laughs> I hope not. And then for my action, mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to cast Frostbite on the one right in front of me. So that's a con save, please. Con save. Um, that is a twelve. That fails. So it will take. A big three cold damage. Three cold um, damage? And has disadvantage on its next attack. Okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, there's like frosty um, like film <clears throat> briefly covers uh, this creature's like front uh, front legs and the front of its wings uh, before crackling and like splintering off in tiny shards of ice. Um, anything and else gonna, you want to do? I'm going to stay put between uh, between M and this threat. Cool. That brings us back up to M. Okay. I think I I'm I'm gonna stay where I am, but I think I yeah I'm gonna look at the one that has just been hit with some cold and launch mm -hmm. a chromatic orb. Um, okay. At it. Yep. Um, which is gonna be a twenty-three to hit. That definitely hits. Um, so this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a cold orb. So just like okay. following on with the, the yep. frostbite. Following on with the theme. Um, and that's gonna be three d eight. So. All right. Whoop. 
17 points of cool damage. Nice. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, Nimbo, you watch as this beginnings of the frost you cast crackle over it before this sphere of cold sort of swirls past your face. It looks almost like a snowball um, before smashing into the creature, further freezing it. It wings stopping for half a second before freeing himself from the cold that just like lashed all over it. Um, I, it's I look over my shoulder. Look, nice one. Yeah, it's starting to look decently hurt. Um, it's hard to tell with these creatures um, because they're not bleeding or anything in the way that, say, that moose did. Um, so you're not entirely sure what to look for. Uh, I will let you know when they are below half hit points. Uh, this one's not quite there yet. So I will also let you know that. Um, anything else you want to do, then? Uh, no, I'm going to stay exactly where I am, just like focused on the two of them. All right, that brings us back to Muck. Muck, this creature got pushed into a bush. Um, in the great words of another, you know, great green man person, it's clobbering time. So I'm about to try and hit this guy with my great sword. All right, you're going to move up into its space? Oh, I think I'm only five feet away anyway. No, you're currently ten feet. Oh, am I? All right, yeah, yeah. let me move up. Uh, yeah. I rolled 16 to hit. 16 will hit. Yes. Okay. Um, maybe I'll move just right here. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So now, time to do the damage. Do your damage. 10 damage. 10 damage. Uh, the creature, as it's trying to free itself from this bush, you uh, look at where one of its legs kicks out this strange claw. Um, you can tell, like, these creatures probably can't land on the ground because of the way their these claws are curved. It doesn't look like it's able to walk. Um, and you bring your greatsword down, smashing it into the side of its leg, uh, doing a, a, a good amount of damage to it. Uh, nice. If it could have walked before, it's gonna struggle now. Ah, oh, cool, I got this bad boy. Yeah, uh, any bonus actions? Not today. All right. Uh, in that case, it's now the creature's turn again. Um, Muck, the one you just hit, is going um, to try to retaliate, lashing one of its claws out at you again. Um, that is a natural one on its part. Um, as it's thrashing about in rage and pain uh, at what it thought was probably going to be an easy meal, um, has now started hitting it instead. Um it just misses you completely. You managed to block the blow um, with your, your armored arm. Uh, the other one's going to try to attack Nimbo again at disadvantage. Uh, that is going to miss. I think that's an 11 to hit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just, it's clawing. It's, it's moving slower than it was before because of all this frost that's attached itself uh, and you're able to bring your shield up easily and just deflect the blow from this big claw. Uh, Blurta, back over to you. Um, I'm not going to be very creative this turn. I'm just going to shoot the same one again. Um, Alright. Not promising. Uh, 11. <laughs> 11 just misses, I'm afraid. Um, Ooh, wait, as wait. It's hard for you to get an angle because, uh, um, uh, like, of where Muck currently is tangling with it. Uh, you try to hit it, like, in the back of the flank, essentially, mm. and you just miss. You miss the angle. I'm going to angle. throw in a Pact of the Talisman D4 roll here. To, okay. Um, yeah, in that case, you will hit. Yes. Uh, do you have to add Pact of the Talisman before I tell you the results? Um, when the, uh, uh, fills an ability check. I, an attack uh, is not uh, an ability check. Oh, yeah, check. sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, I retract yeah. that then. Never mind. No, yeah. Uh, but okay, so it is when you fail it, it's just not for attacks. Fair enough. That's good, good to know for future. Yep. Uh, bonus action? Um, do I have anything I can do for a bonus action? No. Uh, All right. <laughs> Uh, in that case, Nimbo, back over to you. Uh, the frost, the creatures have shaken the frost off. Okay. Um, is there, because uh, squares always make this a little bit weird. Yes. Is there a, uh, a okay, I'm trying, trying, to draw a, trying to draw a 10 foot diameter sphere. Okay, um, the VTT has, if you go to the AOE okay. button, there it is. 
AoE. Uh, you just made this sphere. Turn. Oh, that's it, yeah. <laughs> a sphere so has appeared on the battle map. Okay, so I, because of squares, there's no way I can get both of these uh, no. in one of these. No. They are just slightly too far away from each other, I'm uh, afraid. Okay. In that case, uh, I'm going to bonus action shillelagh. Yep. Um, and then I am going to... How many spells have I got? Yeah, I can burn them. Uh, I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. Okay. At the um, one in front of you? Yeah. All right. And that's a save, right? Yes, that's a con save. Uh, that's a 15. So that'll pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will take half of 2d8. Nice. Half of 9, so 4. Four points of thunder damage. It, it doesn't get moved stop. back then, right? Not if it passes. Yeah. I need to stop trying to be fancy. Just hit it with a stick. Uh, <laughs> you do have your channel divinity ability as well. You can do. Yeah, max I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to use it when it's passed. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 that's fair. <laughs> um, that's fair. Uh, um, okay, so I will. Maybe I will move ten feet to the right to try and see if I can gather them together. Okay, absolutely. Uh, okay, go ahead and I'll move yourself and then wherever I'll you want to go. Pass over. All right, yeah, you're still within its uh, its uh, range, so it's not. Yeah. It can't take a swing at you. Uh, okay, that then brings us back to M. How are they both looking? Is it still the one in the bushes? Um, the one that Muck is fighting is, is literally like on the cusp of being what what we can call bloodied uh below half hit points the other one is looking similar uh but perhaps a little bit more energetic still as it's not bleeding massively from the front leg can i uh like try to reach deep within myself and uh regain a spell slot absolutely uh, are you are you out of spell slots are you trying to yes I want uh, to yeah Cool. Uh, in that case, what level spell slot is it? Uh, first. First level spell slot. Uh, let me get. I believe. Um, so you can you can cast the spell. Um, you will take. Let me find it. Um, a level of you will take one level of exhaustion. Yeah. 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 Cool. But the the spell auto succeeds. So uh, because it's only first level. Um, you don't even need to make the con save um, because you automatically take one level of exhaustion. Okay. Um, anyways, so. that's fine. Yeah. Um, and I was just gonna let off magic myself to the one that's ready to be bloodied, and looks yeah. I think I get three, so one at the other one. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and roll your damages for those. Um, uh, the first one's five, and. The second one is also five, so... I okay, yeah, that one is now definitely bloodied. Um, so, uh, Muck, you watch as these two arcane little darts... What colour are your magic missiles? Um, well, I, I can change I, them, right? Like, um, yeah. But I would imagine they're going to be emerald green. That's what I would say, yeah. These two emerald green missiles just... Um, fly into this, uh, this horse. Uh, that is, you've still got like kind of pressed into this bush at this point. Uh, what was the third damage? Uh, also five. Three good also rolls. five. Nice. Five. Uh, yeah. Okay. The other one is now also bloodied. Um, nice. Yeah. So both of them. Uh, the one that's fighting Muck still a little bit more worn. Uh, I can't believe you rolled max damage three times in a row. That was I know, amazing. amazing. Um, so exciting. What uh, am yeah. I allowed to do with my MVP? What would you like to do with your MVP? You can use it to regain a spell slot as well, so you can use it to not have to take a level of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. um, you can, if you come up with something cool that you think might be outside of the bounds of possibility, you can suggest it to me. Um, okay, I'm gonna have a think. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll think about that. Cool. Uh, or yeah, re use it for like re-rolling something. I believe that's what uh, what Rachel did last time. Yeah. Um, so, okay, okay. give yourself advantage, things like that. Uh, basically, if you want to try something or you want to do whatever you can think of, suggest it, and I will tell you whether or not that's within the bounds. Awesome. Um, 
We will make them up as we go along because it depends on how creative y'all get with it. Um, okay, then that brings us to Muck. Oh, you're muted, I believe, Rachel. Or oh, possibly frozen. Or possibly frozen. Or both? Oh. I'm you're frozen right. and muted. You're, you're back. Right. Right. You're, you're, you're back. You're back. <laughs> you're back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to attack again. Yep, go for it. Um, so, da, 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 da. Oh, it's a dirty 20 to hit. Dirty 20 definitely hits. I don't crit on that, though, do I? Uh, on no, only if you roll a 19 or a 20. Cool, well, that will be 14. Nice. Slashing damage. Uh, yep, you bring your sword down again. This time, you know, aiming for the moose's neck worked real well for you. Uh, you try again, you catch it in the side, not quite the jugular that you were going for, but you gouge this big stripe, um, this strange blackish ichor, not black like the moose's blood was, but darker than you were expecting its blood to be still, uh, splattering across its body and you as well. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, you're gonna have, to, gonna have to wash your hair. Um, and any <laughs> bonus actions? Uh, mm -hmm. no. All oh, right. movement. Uh, no, I'm gonna stay with this guy. I'm gonna... Okay. Yeah. Alright. Um, yeah, the creature um, lashes out at you in retribution. Uh, that is going to be a 17, which I believe... Does that hit you? It yeah, does. It okay. Me. It just about hits me. Right. Um, yeah. It manages to catch you um, off guard with the leg you tried to cut off earlier. You take another nine points of flashing damage Gosh, uh, as it retaliates it. by gouging into your own leg. You still up? Oh, I'm still up, baby. Okay, yeah. No, I wasn't expecting you to not be. <laughs> just, just checking. Um, the <laughs> other one, um, it's going to move slightly closer to Nimbo. Why can I not move this creature? There it is. Oh, it's because it's it's so. Why are you not letting me put it where I want to put it? Okay. Assume it's moved over here. Um, it's... I can it's only move it over there. This is not where I want it to go. It's somewhere in between those two places. It's gonna try to hit Nimbo again. Um, that is going to be a 19 to hit. Oh, just gets in there. <laughs> um, for... Uh, 11 points of slashing damage. Um, I am it... so glad I drank that potion. <laughs> um, this is this is why you were given them. Um, the as only thing claws keeping me up right to now. catch you underneath the shield, lifting it up enough for the other leg to scratch at your chest. That's going to be Wrath of the Storm, baby. Um, this time, my copper armor is going to crackle with lightning, and okay. uh, it's going to be lightning damage. Lightning uh, but that's damage. A okay. Dex save, please. Deck save. How often can you do Wrath of the Storm? Three times a day. Nice. Uh, that's a 15. That'll pass, but still it's... Half damage? Yep. Yeah, they're, um, they've got good decks and good calm, so... That's gonna be, uh... 12, half to 6. 6. Uh, 6 damage. points of lightning damage, which crackles mm -hmm. out, basically, as soon as it impacts your chest. Uh, crackles up its leg. Um stiffens up briefly but we're shaking it off it is blurta's turn again okie dokie so the plants that are directly north of me how like high are those um they're like shorter than you are okay that's fine uh that's good if anything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to through a combination of running and using face step as a bonus action yep which is a light little teleport I'm going to move up to, let's say, this is about there. Okay. I'm just going to assume that you, that's within range. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, um, I, that's basically 60 foot of movement between yeah, the bugs. That's, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and then I'm going to Eldritch Blast the one that is fighting Nimbo. Okay. Yeah, are you going to try to shove it into the other one? Yes, but I miss again. Oh no! What did you? Uh, another eleven? No, less than. That. Oh okay, yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, as the creature and Nimbo are so tangled up, um, the shot just like glances off the side. Uh, doesn't seem to to impact. Shit the balls. Uh, Nimbo. 
Okay, so now I can probably get these. Now they are folks close enough to in, to be in that in same sphere. Yes. Okay, cool. Just yeah. checking. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Now, no now, now you can get them in uh, without getting yourself and Muck. Wonderful. So I'm gonna cast Shatter. Nice. Uh, so you see a kind of just like just like when his kind of the air around him kind of shimmered with that that shockwave you see a sphere of it kind of almost kind of collapse in and then boom uh, a massive sonic boom is heard for i mean i think it's audible something like 300 feet away yeah um and i'm gonna use wrath um destructive oh, what is it destructive wrath yeah i think that's yeah it. i'm gonna use my destructive wrath to do max damage. Okay. So that's 24 thunder damage. Uh, save? What kind of save is this? Con save, please. Holy shit. Uh, the first one rolls in that one. <laughs> the second one rolls Someone's in going 19. to the dog food factory. Uh, sorry, how much damage was it? <laughs> 24. Um, yeah, both of the creatures, upon hearing this noise, uh, the one in front of you, um, you watch as its eyes bulge and ears up uh, ears blood begins to trickle out of it e its ears um before it collapses five feet um onto the ground in front of you um muck you were like s ready to swing your sword to carve into the other one to steal the last of its life and it too suddenly gives a horrifying shriek uh and collapses into the bush um I'm just imagining both me and Muck are like splattered yeah. with <laughs> it's not it like they don't explode. Um but it's definitely like Muck's covered in like spit like you're both like covered in spittle at least. Um mm -hmm. as these creatures yeah. let out these death cries and mingle with the sounds of this sound wave. Um, and as the boom echoes across the, the plains, you see like flocks of birds flying away from trees. Sorry, yeah. I'm not hungry. That's fine. <laughs> um, and that brings us out of initiative. Uh, well done. These two strange horse creatures flying in front of you. Those were not... Those are not... Uh, the Pegasus... Pegasi are, are different from how I thought they'd be. This, is this normal? It's not... Pegasuses. I don't. I do. Can I make some kind of check to see if I can work out what these were? Uh, religion, history would also work for this. Um, yeah, history is probably more. I mean, I'm proficient in both. I can help on either if you want. I will take that. Yeah. Um, that's worse. Okay. Um, I'm gonna no, <laughs> help. <wait. laughs> <laughs> just like distracting Blurta. <laughs> so that, no, wait, that was, yeah, that was a, a flat 10 on both, so... On um, both? Assume... Um, you're not 100%, you you know these are not Pegasuses. Yes. These... Like, I know about horses. This is, these are not Pegasuses. I mean, uh, Pegasus aren't horses exactly. Sorry, Sam, were you going to say something? I was just going to look at Blurtown's place. Always the horse girls who think they know the horses. <laughs> and I have advantage on this i believe if they're like undead they or... are uh no they are not undead or fey or fiend mm. no i'm sorry Ooh, okay um no. i'm still gonna try and recall stuff if that's okay yep go for it a history um, or religion history or religion both i can i can i help on either of those or uh I yeah but you're also you? allowed to you can also make your own check if you want to, to see if nimbo knows this whole time, Muck is just staring open mouthed at Nimbo because she did not expect anyone else to be able to fight, like at all. <laughs> so just no checks, yeah. no nothing, just staring. I got an 18. Uh, 18. Uh, Lil, were you rolling anything? Was it just helping M? Uh, I, I rolled, but it, I'm back on form. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got a natural three, so whatever I rolled. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, you have no idea. Um, M, you... You've read a lot of books in, like, the back parts of the library uh, at Cigaras. Um, and you've definitely... You read stories about these things. Um, everyone 
you know, likes to read stories about Pegasuses because they're noble and good and they help people. Um, but what often gets left out in the stories is that people like to think all Celestials are good, but there's also Celestials that aren't. That might be evil, let's say. Um, these creatures are probably Hurrocks. Um, I can type that into the chat. Yeah, how do you spell that? No? I've, it's in the chat. Um, Hurrocks are a close relative of the Pegasus, um, but their purpose is essentially the opposite. Uh, whereas Pegasus might be the messengers of the gods, stories that involve Hurrocks tend to be Hurrocks sent as punishment. Um, they are carnivorous. Um, according to these stories, and they have a specific taste for humanoids. Um, they would be sent down to see to those who had wronged the gods. I will pass all of that information back to everyone else. What I'm getting from this, okay, this, this is a pitch here. We call ourselves the Ungular Terminators. <laughs> that is like, pretty funny. to make, it, make an intelligence check to see if horses are usually called ungulates. <laughs> they're, they're old toad ungulates. Uh, <laughs> uh, they've got hooves. Uh, they, they are I'm mad about it. I'm mad about it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are technically ungulates. Um, I don't. Yeah, you don't get to decide whether it's ungulates because you don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> how, how do you think taxonomy works, Sam? <laughs> True, it's all a social contract. Um, if... Also, these guys don't have hooves. <laughs> True. True. I'll, I'll give you that one. I first when you said they don't have this, I was like, please don't let them have feet. Like that's. <laughs> they just have human I... feet. <laughs> yeah. Like, is, no, no, they're just they're just creepy as hell. They, they, they have <laughs> they have human hands at the back and human feet at the front. Oh no. <laughs> no. Or human it's hands on the left worse. and human feet on the right. <laughs> I am making another distant cousin to the Pegasus uh, homebrew. Um, if anyone is interested in the Hurrup stats, they are up in D and D Beyond, by the way. Um, so you can uh, have a look at those if you're interested. Um, Honestly, it seems um, pretty worrying. Uh, I was quite uncomfortable with how that last confrontation went with that poor moose, and now we've been punished for it by the gods. So... Um, what kind of check do I need to do about the blood to see what the blood is? Uh, medicine? <laughs> or snail nature? Check. <laughs> snail check. <laughs> Um, I you can find do... a snail and dip it in the blood. <laughs> I'll do a medicine check. Right. Is that this region's snack? <laughs> yeah. 10 plus 1, 11. Um, you're like sniffing it, rubbing it between your fingers. Would Muck taste it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's been just out like, in the woods. She's not yeah, afraid. just like gently tasting it. It's not, it, it's like blood. It's not like any blood you've tasted before, but you've never tasted celestial blood before. Uh, okay, cool. So it's like, as far as you can tell, this might be normal. Mm -hmm. Does it taste like Angel Delight? <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm gonna say, yeah. That's another, that's another, uh, that's Celestial another flaming body. heteros re reference, and it's one that <laughs> makes me want to go to Kettering and slap Alex in the face. <laughs> Check out that whole campaign up on YouTube. Yes. Um, if you dare. If you. <laughs> so, what, what, what was Muck's interaction with the blood? Uh, Probably what blood tastes felt like. It, sniffed it, tasted it. And was just like, still kind of out of it, just like, yeah, I guess, but that's probably fine. I'm just not even saying anything. Uh, Nimbo is visibly, visibly concerned. Um, you know, he's, he's just vo voiced his, uh, 
his discomfort with the fact that a being that is known to be a punishment from the gods has just attacked them after doing something that Nimbo was not sure about. I would posit, perhaps, that there is no guarantee which god this from, so it could be from a dickhole god that we don't care about their opinion. <laughs> oh, the god of dickholes, yeah. <laughs> 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 His blessings rain down upon us. <laughs> God of nitrogenous waste. <laughs> I think Muck hears that Nimbo's talking about gods again, and I just like, no, don't, don't do that. You, you were just so full like two minutes ago. Don't bring this shit up again. But that's just, where these things awesome. come from. No, they don't. They came from the sky. <laughs> yeah, but where do you think they? Why do you think they came? You know, they're not normally. Can I um potentially either have a think or maybe a try and kind of connect with uh, probably mm -hmm. Vias to see whether I get a vibe that they these Huruks might have. Might have been sent here by the gods, or were are they part of this kind of all this uh, unexpected fauna that's been popping up? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a relate uh, relationship. A relationship. Ah, yeah, check. my second uh, cousin uh, knows a lot about these. Um, you phone a friend. Um... I still can't roll double digits. Uh, that's an eleven. That's a double digit in a way. I mean, yeah, not on the dice though. Nimbo's mm -hmm. doing a lot of the work himself. <laughs> you try to reach out to Vias, but you're a bit you're very you're shaken up right now. Yeah, it's like when you call <laughs> someone up, but like you you kind of don't want them to pick up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this morning with the Darkling. And it was so sad, and oh yeah, it Vias Vias is disappointed in you. You know Vias is disappointed in you. You're not gonna. You ask him later. If this was a punishment, it was deserved. I'll just yeah, think about what I've done. Yeah. You can you can try again later, but right now it's you're too distracted to really try to to focus on that connection you have with with nature and with its god. Think of it this way. We have just survived. If you are correct, and this is the vengeance of God, we are the badasses who just survived the vengeance of the gods. So that means we're awesome. Yeah. Also, if the gods are sending in vengeance, the killing the moose that killed a bunch of people, then maybe the gods are wrong. Did you ever think about that? Uh, I mean, you know, gods are not complete beings. You know, that's why there <laughs> yeah, are so like, many of them. Where's the sheep's god, right? What happened to all the sheep? What if there's a sheep nimbo? Are sheep... Oh, wow. Are sheep capable of worship? Yeah, like, probably. They worship Baal. <laughs> <laughs> also, really Blurter, I think you might have been onto something about us surviving it. Maybe, you know, the attack was the punishment, and now, you know, the punishment's over. We've We've paid our penance. You know, those claws hurt. I'm I'm bleeding a lot. As am I. Should we have a have a bit of a sit down? Maybe have a have a bit of a short rest. I, I'm quite in favour of that, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a short rest if you want. I am using all my hit dice. <laughs> yeah, go for it. You will regain them all until you get to like six or seven level you'll regain all of them on a long rest um just because otherwise it gets unfair to lower level characters real quick in my opinion um, um, uh, i guess i'm also using all of them <laughs> i'm fine <laughs> i'm just a bit tired even after yeah. all my hit Disadvantage in all ability checks till you take a long rest, Sam. I know, but like, yeah. HP-wise, I'm fine. No, yes, you are. 
On the plus side, I have all my spells back, so... But your DM's really happy you didn't steamroll that encounter! <laughs> First one where that's not happened! Uh, if only there was a golden snake guy here. <laughs> no golden snake guys allowed. <laughs> But even after using all three of my hit dice, uh, I'm still, I'm still visibly uh, and physically and, and emotionally shaken. Yeah. Like I'm not at full HP yet. Oh, it's starting to get towards mid afternoon at this point. Um, you can probably, if you're looking at the map uh, open on the BTT, um, you can probably travel like one more hex. Um, before it gets dark. Um, so I can show the audience as well. Uh, the P is where the party is currently. In the middle of the Ambel plane. They are on their way to the Citadel. Up on the cliffs. Uh, and you can make it about... Like, not quite to the base of the cliffs. Um, before you're probably going to want to rest for the night. I mean, do... Uh, I'm, I'm going to drop the accent for a second for a while. We're dis <laughs> discussing out of character. Um... Are we likely to find other accommodation or like even just like a trading spot or something? Um, you might find a caravan of traders whose uh, camp you could share. Um, Bear Fell, there was a sign when you entered Bear Fell that said like last respite before uh, the Andel plane. Um, so you're you're likely going to need to make camp. Okay. Hmm. Well, yeah, let's uh, let's make what progress we can. Let's get going, yeah. I'll tell you what, um, Nimbo, would you care to um, carry my box again, and then perhaps I can rest while we're on the move, and then I can stay up all night to keep watch, so you can all get proper rest. Oh, that'd be great. Um, I my eyes flick to M's eyes. As if they're like, kind of like, is this a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> in in M's head, not saying it out loud, but just like feels that why everyone else should have to walk, whilst Blurter just takes a little lie down. Well, you know, oh no, you haven't said this out loud. No. Okay. Um. Okay. I. I I probably I'm not reading any kind of open concern that this is be this would be like an unsafe thing to do. I probably um yeah you know that 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 makes sense. Yeah, you get a rest now. We get a rest later. Where does this box go, by the way? Like, where do you do? You, are, you, are you just in a box? It's um, it's it's a little uh, home away from home, let's say. Okay, because. There've been, you know, just in the last couple of days, we've been seeing all sorts of stuff, you know, hopping and bleeding between realms and planes. This isn't one of those, is it? Are you, are you going to start spawning monsters? I haven't thus far. Um, I do not. Can you just make a quick uh, persuasion check to see? If she feels like sharing with you or not, because you are quite trustworthy, so you you you've got the potential there. But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, the bad rolls continue. That uh, was a uh, natural four, which gets bumped to a five. Ooh, oh. like mm, <laughs> maybe later I will tell you. Sure, I I respect those boundaries. Yeah. Um. In case I hold out the box and then shower of sparks. Um, seeing how Blurter exited the uh, exited the the box last time, I'm going to make sure that I have it kind of like you know strapped to the like the side of my pack or something rather than like in anything. <laughs> Just like explode out your pocket. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably sensible, yeah. Or or like you come back and you're just like in the middle of my backpack surrounded by all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <"Whoa." laughs> um yeah, easy enough to do. 
Uh, yeah, you can strap the the box essentially to like the bottom of your your uh, your pack. Um, M, Nimbo, and Muck, you continue uh, to trudge along the path, keeping an eye probably on the skies now as well. Um, Blurta, mm -hmm. you settle down for some rest, and as you drift off. Um, into your slightly odd elfin sleep, you suddenly find yourself in a place that is familiar to you, but probably not one you like being. It's swelteringly hot. Um, the light is glaring, um, just torches everywhere you see little like flecks of flame just drifting through the air and these dark stone walls and floor are strangely lit with strange glimmering gemstones almost or, or veins of gems throughout them and sitting one leg up over the side um, armrest, lounging back in this massive padded leather chair, is Broom, the Efriti. <laughs> Hi, Blurta. Hi, fuckface. Uh, good to see you again. You, uh, left the, uh, boarding school then, eh? Finally let you out. So it would seem. Good, good, good. Listen. Listen. Sort of readjusts, leans forward, massive towering over you, this strange shifting form of, like, clouds of flaming gas, almost. Um... Corpor corporeal in some at some points, but at other points becoming more of this strange mass that's just moving with this faint air currents. Look, I, uh, watch what you did with that moose. Impressive for a bunch of kids, probably, but, uh, you gotta stop wasting your time. If you want the old, uh, back well you could just give it to me uh you gotta do something for me first kick your ass i would love to see you try stripling even your new fancy friends wouldn't be able to do much maybe one day you're a bit uh tougher So what is this favor you would have of me, then? If you are to drag me here in my sleep? You're going to the Citadel. Read a lot about that place. There's a lot of powerful artifacts kept there. A lot of powerful people. I want you... To keep an eye out for anyone who might know more than they're letting on about the recent events. And by which I assume you mean the earthquakes and the monsters and... Exactly, yes, yes. yes. So you I... are asking me to do what I was sent to do there anyway. Exactly. I didn't think you'd object, I just... I mean, Your uh, priestess seems to think you should stop along the way to help people. Don't bother with that. You realize that every time you tell me to do something, it makes me want to do the opposite. But this could be reverse psychology, so honestly, we're at a stalemate. You think what you like. You want your eye back? 
I'll let you know when I think you found the right person. Hmm. Well, I shall keep one eye out. Good. I'll keep the other one. Enjoy your night's sleep. And, uh, real clever, making your friends carry you and do all the work. I, I thought so too, but, uh... <laughs> this strange, coal-like eye winks at you, and then, before you even finish your reply, this whole vision vanishes. And you return to a peaceful sleep. Okie dokie. M. Nimbo and Muck. Uh, could one of you roll a d8 for me, please? I'll do the thumb. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, a five. A five. Um, as you are continuing to walk along the path, um, keeping an eye out for any creatures uh, that might approach, anything that might threaten you after your earlier encounter with those Hurrocks, um, you don't notice anything in particular um, until you spot a strange rock formation up ahead. Um, you slow your walk slightly, approaching it perhaps a bit more carefully, um, looking muck to your trained eye, like a place where someone might be able to set up an ambush. Oh lord. Who's going to be up front to approach this? I will. I'm happy to. It's like literally like right next to the road, so it's gonna be you can try to go around, but you'll have to leave the road and, and curve back. Mm. Best stay on the road, I reckon. Um you begin to walk carefully towards it. Um I will, I will uh, be not too far behind the yeah. Um, and but not also not too far away from M, so I'll probably be like equidistant. In, equidistant, yeah. Fair enough. Um, you get close, and what you think is first, you see a person hiding. But they're not moving, and as you get even closer, you realize that it's just an, a fallen bit of rock, uh, a statue um, of an armed warrior. Um, very well muscled, dressed in a strange sort of plate armor that you don't quite recognize or any style that you might have seen before, um, with a helmet that covers the top part of the face, um, and then sort of curves around the jaw, um, the same kind of strange scaly plates um, wielding in one arm a shield um, with some kind of something on it. it. It's hard to tell. There's plants overgrown um, and in the other hand broken off um, the remnants of a carved um, stone blade of some kind. Um, Investigation? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go for it. It wouldn't be perception, would it? That would be too easy. Um, you can make a perception trick to try to spot more things. You're gonna have to clear like some of the undergrowth to try to get out like more details. Okay, I'm gonna like swipe the undergrowth with my sword. Yeah. All right, go ahead and make an investigation check to see what you might... Oh, sorry, I rolled perception. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll do perception. Uh, dirty 20, 17 yeah. plus 3. All right, yeah. You're not getting too close. You're a bit hesitant still. Um, but as you're moving the undergrowth aside, you s suddenly see the, the sigil carved into the shield. Um, in a slightly... It still looks like it's still rock, but slightly different uh, to make it stand out. Um... It's like a U shape with an arrow on either side of the U and a downward arrow um, sort of crossing it. Um, Nimbo and Muck, can you both make religion checks? Muck, you have advantage of this. Oh, shit. Not 17. 
Oh. Um, <laughs> Nimbo, it takes you a little bit longer because you're a little bit further away, but Muck, you recognize this immediately um, because it's a symbol that Adker would always wear um, on like a, a, a leather thong around his neck. Uh, this is the, the sigil of Castus, god of war. Um, this is the deity most associated with the place you've been uh, you've been training. getting. You've been training, yeah. Um, and the statue, looking at it now, is it's very old, but it's not dissimilar to other statues you may have seen of this god. Um, Does it look like this... it was toppled recently? Is the break clean, or has it been like... This looks like weathered? an old, a very old shrine, probably. Um, that's not been maintained um and that's been weathering here for a long a long time what's this doing all the way out here you can make a history check yeah can i help yeah and at this point you can decide if you come up to join them as well i am wondering if i'm not really paying attention fair enough history 17 plus two 17 plus what two Awesome. Um, yeah, you um, have had like military history as well, um, and you know this was a long, like a long time ago um, in history. Um, but there have been battles fought uh, on the Anvil Plain specifically. Um, Lissold was always sort of in a tenuous position because it it lies very low. Um, so it's a relatively easy capital to attack, uh, and there have been previous wars with neighboring kingdoms, um, which tended to culminate on the Anvil Plain because it is so widespread. Uh, so a shrine to Castas might be left over from one of these wars. Okay. Hard to tell specifically which war it is. Um, you looking around, you can't see like any numbers or anything carved into it that would give any indication. Okay. So this was toppled a while ago, so it's not like someone's done it to send a sign or anything. This was probably a shrine set up specifically for a war, and then mm. afterwards it was allowed to like return to the land um, when it was decided that Castus' attention was no longer needed in this place. Of course, okay. But it still looks like we could get ambushed around here, or is it just the It's statue? Now that you're closer to it, it's just like the way the statue and the surrounding like foliage. Mm -hmm. um, it's still like, there's like a, you could hide like a couple people in there, but you would have <laughs> seen them by now. Yeah. Um, and it's mostly just the fact that the statue is an armed man who has fallen over uh, and cool. sort of like hidden from the the way you were approaching it. All right, I'm just gonna be like, all oh, good guys, just some god statue. Um, you know, keep an eye out. Always good to keep an eye out. But uh, yeah, I think I absolutely killed this one. Let's carry on. I know you're, um, you know, not 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 a massive you know, divinity enthusiast, but did. Back in the in the Marshall School, did you, you know, have any dealings with that kind of faith with the the Church of Castus? Castus. Um, I don't really pay attention. I mean, like my commander wore a little Castus thingy around his neck, so you know there were fans, um, but not me necessarily. I mean, it was God of War, God of Wastes, and I guess we're on a plane that probably got beat up pretty bad at some point um so yeah i mean that's it from me why oh just you know wondering if if you wanted to if you wanted to fix it up and give you a hand but you know if you're not first war yeah is part of the natural balance of life but yeah i don't think we need to start bringing castus's attention when we've already got enough on our plate yeah, yeah, I'm cool. Just keep it moving. Sweet. Carry on. Yeah. Um, you continue to make your way towards the cliffs. They're getting a lot closer now. Um, you're not you're not there yet. It'll take you probably another morning's worth of walking before you make it 
fully to the um, the cliffs themselves, but you can see the gap uh, between two cliffs where the, the path starts to wind upwards into the heathland. Um, what the sun is starting to set, uh, and you begin to look around for a place probably a little ways off the road um, to make camp for the night, um, as it won't be long now until um, the whole plane falls into darkness. Um, it lying in a valley, being overshadowed by those cliffs. Um, it's as the sun sets. Um, it gets dark rapidly. Yeah, I'll cast light on my um, on my amulet. So yeah. around Nimbo's neck, he has a like a small kind of wooden carved amulet, which is kind of yeah blackened charred wood. Um, and I'm going to cast light on that, so it's kind of like a chest torch. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not quite dark, uh, so dark yet that you'll you need you need it to see by, but it definitely helps you to find like a spot that's like free of like ants heaps and stuff, uh, uh, prairie dog holes, what have you. Um, and you're able to settle down and make camp. It'll be another hour or so before Blurta um, is going to make an appearance. Um, so if you wish you have this time, would you, if you would like it, um, or we can fast forward to uh, blurt every appearance. I think maybe uh, whilst Blurter is still in, in her box, I'll kind of ask Em, well, I'll, I'll say both, but like in a conversation with everyone. But, um, Em, I know that you and Blurter seem to have a certain like dynamic. Is everything okay? Em, you good? She's considering her words at this point. Everyone in school knew, like, thought she was a bitch, and. I, I have been led to believe the same, and this I tend to kind of keep my distance, so it's, it's, it's uncomfortable being in such close proximity to someone that you try to actively avoid. Is there, is there anything we can do to make things more comfortable? Because, I mean, you know, she, she's a bit abrasive. But I mean, she hasn't necessarily shown shown us anything that would make make it make her not not trustworthy yet. Maybe you two just need to fight it out, get out of the system. Hmm. Yeah, you know, when when the air is full of kind of the negative and positive energies pulling each other apart, and the 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 different air currents are flowing against each other, you just have a have a bit of a storm. And all that tension gets gets washed out in the rain and the lightning and the thunder and the wind. Oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> My 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 battles are elsewhere. I would rather just not have much to do with her. But Okay, cool. If you ask where to where you could potentially help. It's best to look out for any bullying behaviour that kind of flies under the radar, you know? Mm. Yeah, uh, well, well, I, could, we, I can definitely keep a better eye out for that. Sorry if I've been a bit slack. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm new, to, new to all of this. We all have a lot going on. We have a, a busy journey ahead of us. I understand. You've both been very kind to me so far. Oh, great. Well, yeah, hopefully we can, you know, can keep building this and... You never know. Like, that tension has got to find its way out at some point, somehow. Mm. I wouldn't count on it, but, yeah. The universe always achieves balance, one way or the other. Just... 
punch her. Just once, just to see how it feels. I mean, that is that is a way. If you just do it once, it's not bullying. <laughs> I'm, I'm very lightly punched. Science and sorcery arm. does not endorse this. <laughs> this <laughs> I'm role playing. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta fight your friends. <laughs> no, as someone who's like full force punch Nimbo. <laughs> <As> someone... <laughs> Nimbo is unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep it in mind if ever things get a bit too much. Sure, check in whenever you need. Thank you. And then the box goes. <laughs> <laughs> Watching this whole well, conversation. Too much. Yeah. Oh, yes. um, yeah. I, yeah. Flirta, you once again get violently expelled from the box. Um. <laughs> The nature of this being, you basically have to fall asleep the second you enter the box, and mm. then, in order to get the full four hours of, that yeah. you need for a long rest, um, but you are able to rejoin your companions mm -hmm. uh, until they decide to go to sleep. And I, I did indeed hear that entire conversation because I can yeah. do from inside the box. Uh, but except what, you were not awake. Hmm? Yeah, but I can like I, I can hear in a trance as well. <laughs> I'm gonna argue that no, you can't. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, during your <laughs> meditation, like that, you like the light activity you do. Yes, during the trance itself, it's like, have you ever meditated and where you end up in that state where you lose track of time? Um, uh, No. Has anyone no? Is this just me who's done this? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, sometimes yeah. if you're walking, I mean... you're like, ooh. <clears throat> well, I mean, yeah. like, like actual meditation, it can happen as well. Basically, you forget how long you've been meditating, and you don't really, you're not really aware of what's going on around you, um, because otherwise, mm -hmm. you essentially wouldn't be resting at all. You would just be fully conscious the whole time. It what it says? It says I'm semi-conscious. If that makes sense. Yeah, but you also you. you also being in this box, um, like mm, no. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Like you, you'd be aware well, they you were got your having headphones a on conversation. To... You know they were having a conversation. You wouldn't have be fully aware of what what was being said. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah. And they're um, listening to brown noise. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, or like like hearing speak people speak in a foreign language, like sort of in the distance. Um, oh yeah, or like when the adults speak in peanuts. Yes. <laughs> yes. Essentially. Essentially. Uh, you can come up with more metaphors. It's like being underwater. Um, <laughs> Blurta, you return, not having heard this uh, entire conversation, Ooh, but fine. being <laughs> aware of the fact that it occurred. I, I literally just hear the word blurter whenever it's said. Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you become vaguely aware whenever you hear your name and then you slip back into that trance state. Mm, talk about me. Excellent. Yes. Blurter. <laughs> what a bitch. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> Muck goes up to Blurter and just goes, yeah. And the light gives you a light punch on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and then they look at Elmo like, see? <laughs> Eventually, um, Nimbo and Muck, you all settle down for the night. Um, um, you're, you fall, you're exhausted. Uh, so despite your normal anxiety, you falls into a relatively deep sleep quite quickly. Um, Nimbo, still feeling more anxious than normal. You lay awake, probably longer than you'd like, thinking about everything that's happened today. You're not sure be... how to feel. I... The gods are angry at me. Were they angry at me and now they're not angry at me? I'm 
I'm on a yeah, I'm on a mission directly from Gads. Um but uh, I don't know. This is all new. And those are kind of just going round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And, and, and eventually you do manage to to nod off. Muck, uh you killed a lot of things today. Probably feeling pretty good, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think all the things I killed deserve to die. So, yeah. tick, 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 tick. Yeah. You go to sleep not feeling too worried uh, about what happened today or perhaps even about what's to come. And Blurta, as you keep watch throughout the night, perhaps mulling over what, why Brum called you to that space in which you meet, that's not quite the plane of fire, but something other at the same time. Night passes quietly, peacefully. Eventually the sun begins to rise and you're able to shake your companions awake and prepare for further journey up towards the Trammel Cliffs and whatever awaits you beyond. And unless I hear objections from the players, I think perhaps this is a good point to leave it. Yay! Yeah. Is this our first long rest? Is this the end of day one? I'm so bad at uh, track End of, of day stuff. two. End of day two, right. Yeah. So you slept field. in a field. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, you do all get a long rest. Um, so, you can regain anything that needs regaining, M, you are no longer exhausted. Um, and you have another full journey, a full day's worth of journey, uh, to get to the town of Siron, uh, up on the cliffs. Which will be your next stop, but we will get to that Bye. next week, uh, for those of you watching at home, and a week and a half for our players. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Um, I, we hope you had a good time, even without us responding to you in the chat. Player of the week. Player of the week. <laughs> Who is our MVP? What happened? It was a lot <laughs> happening. It was all very balanced. There's a lot this happening. Week. This yeah. Is yeah. I do think it was very balanced across all four this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you can like also, if you would yeah. like to, you can decide it like group MVP, but then you have to all agree for what you use it for. Um, oh. M cannot be MVP because M still has an MVP. So I so. keep it, even if you I'm keep not it. Yeah, it. yeah. Multiple Nine. people can have one. Uh, okay. you, they just don't stack. Okay. I thought it was pretty cool when Nimbo exploded those two things. <laughs> I, mean, I did like that. that was fair. I was pretty proud of that. If they got <laughs> another round, I think it would have ended badly for y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah. They had a pretty good uh, attack modifier and 2d6 damage every time plus stuff. So. Yeah, I, th I think. Yeah, I'm happy for it to go to Nimbo. Mm -hmm. I also feel like Blurt is cooking up something. Like, I don't know what's going on, but something is going on. <laughs> So I'm going to wait until I see what Blur is really up to, capable of doing. Well, before you gonna... give her that power. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She's going to run with a force and fucking decapitate me. I'm not doing that. And pushes your head 10 feet backwards. <laughs> not the rest of your body. And my chest is going to be forwards. Like... <laughs> All right, Nimbo, you have a moment of awesome you can also use uh, in a future session. Thank um, you. And with that, uh, does everyone want to maybe remind our viewers where they can find you? Anyone have, have anyone have anything new going on? How about that? Um, no, Rachel? Not since session one. Same okay. old Twitter, yeah. podcast, It's only been a couple of weeks. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sam, you've got some new stuff, though. Yeah, I have my new Twitch channel at uh, yep. Sam Size. Um, where we'll be doing video games, Pomodoro streams, co-working, cool um, some other cool things, and we'll be building Lego. So, yeah, at Sam Size, S I G H S. Yep, awesome. Uh, I've remembered. Alex... I do have a thing. Oh, tell us. Ooh, sorry. No, Didn't tell interrupt. us. 
Um, so last week when this go goes out, last week was Generation Hope in that first museum where I do my day job. And as part of that, I hosted a panel on environmental justice is racial justice with three amazing activists, young climate activists and social activists from around the world. Um, so you can find a link to that on the Generation Hope webpage. So if you go to, uh, if you search for Natural History Museum Generation Hope and down the bottom there's a list of all the past shows and you can catch that stream. Um, it was, yeah, it was really cool. Amazing. Yeah. Can I Fantastic. add one thing as well? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm not currently doing anything. I'm currently writing up my PhD. Okay. But if you have any ideas for things that you would like to see me do, I'm open, like, you know, for good reason. But uh, <laughs> yeah, let me know. <laughs> it would be nice to have, you know, some post PhD life things going on. So I'm open to suggestions. I want to see you smash Sam's Lego after he builds it on screen. That was a really good idea. <laughs> I can do that. I just think it would be funny. <laughs> um, really what mean. Yeah. Oh, he's dying now. <laughs> uh, Alex, still open for commissions? Yes, I'm from commissions, and if you didn't Very watch good. it live, go watch the transaction. Which go watch the transaction. It will be up on YouTube by the time this airs, so help me God, or I am fired. Um, and with <laughs> that, I don't have anything new going on, because I now also have to start writing up my thesis. Um, but you can find Science and Sorcery at at Sci and, so and Sorcery on Twitter. You can find us on Redbubble at Science N Sorcery. Uh, we've got lots of fun designs. Probably going to be something transaction themed on there at some point, I'm assuming, Alex. I um, assume so. With I, any just votes? from the jokes I've heard already, I feel like there should be. Um, Personally, I'm waiting for the very sick pig t shirt. The very sick pig is in the drafts, I believe. Yep. Yeah, I did <laughs> yeah. <a> sketch over. <laughs> um, you can also support the show on Patreon, uh, Science and Sorcery on Patreon, uh, and on YouTube if you want to watch back any of our previous streams or campaigns there have been a lot of references tonight to legend of the flaming heteros uh so do be sure to check that out on youtube as well um and with that uh that is the end of the stream remember to donate to gallop and send us proof of your donations if you haven't done so yet uh, i might win a cool dice bag sam shows again cool dice bag oh my god um but yeah we'll see you here again next week thank you so much for joining us and have a great evening everyone Good night. Bye.